confines as the Chicago Cubs host the hottest team in baseball riding a 12 game road winning streak the Los Angeles Dodgers. I don't believe it. This doesn't happen even in Hollywood. And the Dodgers win a thriller. This is unbelievable. Who's writing this script for this kid? They are the talk of baseball from coast to coast and everywhere in between. We welcome you to Wrigley Field where the first place Dodgers take on the Chicago Cubs. The weather here in Chicago outstanding and the Dodgers playing outstanding baseball even away from home. They have a chance today to win their 13th straight road game and that would set a franchise record going all the way back to their days in Brooklyn. I'm Chris Myers glad to have you for Fox Saturday baseball along with former Dodger and Cub Eric Karros and the Dodgers. We hear about the Hollywood headliners rookie Yasiel Puig and Hanley Ramirez. Well it's been a lot more than that. Sure they're 29 and 7 and those two have been a huge factor in why they've been successful. But it's really been a team effort. I mean, you look at guys like A.J. Ellis, 19 RBIs during that span. Some of the other guys, Uribe, 16. And look at that right there, the record, 29-7, and seven, first in batting average and first in ERA. The pitchers have been great. The bullpen has been great. And as I said, it's a team effort, and that's what it's taken to get the Dodgers in first place. And for the Dodgers, the future is now, Eric. What about the future of the young Cubs? Well, right now, it's a struggle, but they're headed in the right direction. They've got young stars, Anthony Rizzo, Starlin Castro, and right now, Junior Lake has taken this town by storm. It's not going to happen this year. It's probably not going to happen next year. But Cubs fans have a lot to be excited about because I think a championship is right around the corner. Right. We'll check on the starting pitchers and the batting order. As youth will be served today, 22-year-old Cuban sensation Yasiel Puig leading the Dodgers and Junior Lake, with Eric just mentioned, leading the Cubs. We're glad you're with us from Wrigley Field for Fox Saturday Baseball. Temperature in the mid 70s, a slight breeze and a sunny afternoon as the Cubs take the field. Our starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. 
the way the Dodgers and Don Mattingly like it with Carl Crawford leading off. Week second, Hanley Ramirez. Week, by the way, 11 home runs in his first 52 Major League games here. Ethier's in the cleanup spot. Tim Fedorovich behind the plate for pitcher Chris Capuano, who will bat ninth. Jeff Samarja gets the start. He was the Cubs starter on opening day. And that earned run average actually since the All-Star break he's pitched rather well. Well it really has it, it. He's one of those guys that he can be nasty and he can be an uncomfortable at bat. What he's got to guard against is his control. He's fourth in the major leagues. I should say National League in walks. And he's got to control Puig. And what I mean by that is you can't make a mistake to Puig. He can be pitched to have your control, hit your spots, and you'll be fine if you're smart. His 23rd start of the year, and that leads the majors. The defense behind him. Cubs have made 72 errors, but they do have a gold lover at second base of Darwin Barney. Cole Gillespie in left, Nate Sheerholz in right, and Junior Lake, the rookie sensation with a terrific arm in center field. Wellington Castillo. The catcher that Samarja prefers behind the plate, who makes it tough on base runners. Don Mattingly in his third year managing this Dodger team. Dodgers hold an option for his contract beyond this year, and when the Dodgers got off to the rough start, there were a lot of people, I should say, outside the organization, chatting about maybe a change is necessary with the high payroll and high expectation and Dodger ownership was smart they, they stuck with Don Manning and I don't think there was ever a question at least in my mind that he was at fault I, the bottom line is the players were just playing poorly he called them out on the carpet and since then he's been they've been playing well opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser the official beer of Major League Baseball great times are waiting grab some buds Dodgers have turned the National League West upside down. They went from the bottom to the top. A three and a half game lead here as they begin play today. And the first pitch from Samarja is in there for a strike. Dodgers playing in their 109th game for the Cubs, fourth in the National League Central. Out of the bottom ahead of Milwaukee. This is their 110th game of the season. Right back off Samarja and drifts shallow into left field. And Crawford is on. Carl Crawford just shoots his ball right back up the middle. Now Starlin Castro was shaded right behind second base. That ball, if you see Starlin right back there, he is right behind second. This ball shoots over to the shortstop position where if he's playing straight up, maybe he has a shot. Probably not with the speed. But again, Crawford down at first base leading off for the Dodgers. One steal since he came off the disabled list July 5th, but he's 10 of 13. So he could go at any moment. Yasiel Puig, who has done everything the Dodgers have asked, and then some, whether it's at the plate, on the base path, or in the field. Comes in hitting 371. 25 runs battered in. We mentioned the 11 home runs. And if you look at where Darwin Barney, the second baseman, is playing in this situation, he is shaded towards second base. First baseman Rizzo is holding on Crawford, so they've got that whole right side of the infield open. If I'm a hitter and I'm Puig, that tells me they're just coming in hard. They're not going to throw anything away. The 2 0 pitch from Samarja. Runner goes, throw down, and out is Crawford at second base. That's a 2 0 count. You've got Puig up. Puig does the right thing as far as squaring to bunt, trying to interrupt the catcher. Castillo does a nice job, gets Crawford easily. Not so sure that that's the time to be running. 2 0 Puig up. And And now a 3-1 count on Puig and Hanley Ramirez, who was given the day off yesterday. The Dodgers have won the first two games of this four-game series. He is due up next year. 
since he has hit the major league scene June 3rd, the staggering numbers. Up we. That is fouled off. And you see Castillo setting up inside. The, the book on Puig is fastballs in and in off the plate. He has a tendency to go after those pitches. They've been able to jam him to get in there. Again, if you're going to miss inside, you can miss towards Puig, where if you hit him, you hit him. You just don't want to miss out over the plate. Mark McGuire, the batting instructor for the Dodgers, has been working with Puig a little bit on going to right field without losing the all out swing. The 3 2. Toward the hole and short. And Puig, with that blazing speed, is safe anyway. And if you want to see how to go after Puig, the, the Cubs are going by the book here. It's in, 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 and then we're going to go in some more. This is with a 3 1 to 2 1 count. They go away just to show them, and then they go in, in. That pitch is out over the plate. Castillo is set up every time in, in, in. And not much Castro could do with that. It's a base hit for Puig. Crawford thrown out trying to steal, and now Puig, who could go at any time, even when the Dodgers don't want him to, as Hanley Ramirez steps in, hitting 370. Swung on and fouled, and against Jeff Samarja in his career, Hanley Ramirez is 8 for 15. Yeah, he's definitely had some success. You don't want to take the bat out of his hands. You, you mentioned Puig, very aggressive. He's got seven stolen bases. He's been caught five times, though. Rizzo holding Puig at first. Samarja so came in fifth in the National League in strikeouts with 146. And he gets the strike. Called by home plate umpire Greg Gibson. So he's ahead 0 2 after two base runners have reached. Ramirez with 11 home runs this year hits the ball as hard as anybody in the game. Samarja comes in with that six and nine record, an ERA under four. Coming off a strong outing Monday against Milwaukee with seven shutout innings, allowed just three hits and struck out seven. Trying to cool the blazing Dodgers. And Hanley Ramirez is out number two. He's been hitting them hard with the fastballs, and then he drops it off speed pitch right here. It's great pitch out of the zone. So that splitter, it's really Samarja's pitch. He told me yesterday, Eric, if the splitter is on, I'm going to be fine. And then the fastball effective. Getting Hanley Ramirez there. So there are now two down as Bleak remains at first for today's cleanup hitter, Andre Ethier. Ethier had a day off Thursday in this series, then went 0 for 3 with a couple of walks yesterday. As the Dodgers again have won the first two of this four game series. 265, seven home runs in center field today because of the Matt Kemp injury where he's played quite a bit, but has been a right fielder much of his career. Again, look, look at defensively what the Cubs are doing. They're employing another shift. The third baseman is basically playing in the conventional shortstop area. And notice each of these hitters, the Cubs make huge shifts. Don't play anybody straight up. Samarja so obviously aware of that as that's driven towards center field. And there is Junior Lake on the track for the final out of. An adventurous opening inning, but scoreless as we go to the bottom of the first in Chicago.
Winning, but nothing to show for it as we now check in the bottom half of the first. The starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got a lit boss for the Chicago Cubs who lead the National League in home runs at home with 72. The team batting average down at 242. Wellington Castillo in the cleanup spot. They've been working with that quite a bit. Darwin Barney all the way down to batting eighth and Samarja, the pitcher, hits ninth. And on the mound, Chris Capuano, who turns 35 years old later this month, the lefty for the Dodgers, a 9-3 and three career record against the Chicago Cubs and has been very good whenever he's pitched at Wrigley Field. Yeah, it really has. I, I mean, this place for him has been very, very friendly. Last three starts here, 24 innings, has not allowed a run. Can't fall in the lake. That's a play on Junior Lake. He's been dynamite so far in this series. Two home runs on Thursday, four hits last night. Got to stay away from him. Junior Lake hitting 358, four home runs and seven runs batted in. He's not afraid to bunt to get on either. The 23 year old rookie from the Dominican Republic, 12 hits in his first five major league games. That hadn't been done by him. Cubs since 1916. He's put a charge into a, a team that has two thirds of its roster different than how they were on opening day. Capuano is 14th start of the season. Coming off an outstanding performance and no decision last Sunday against the Reds. Did not allow a run into the seventh inning. Dodgers went on to win an 11. Capuano has had some roller coaster days. He's given up five runs and then none the next outing. Five runs and none the next out. Well, and that's exactly what it's been. It's basically been an all or nothing. And I don't want to say nothing because he'll get you five or six innings. But he has. He's either been lights out or he gets hit around. There is a one attempt that he holds up on. So it's two and one now for Junior Lake, who has shown power. He has shown speed. Well, he's got all the physical attributes. He just needs experience. He needs playing time. Probably going to be a corner outfielder in the future playing center today. He's played some third base and infield through the minor league. Swung on and all the way ahead of Hanley Ramirez. Junior Lake is on. Coming off that four hit game, Eric. He was the first Cub to have two four hit games in his first 16 major league games. You see this pitch just right down the heart of the plate. Or at least for, for Capuano's sake, kept it in the ballpark there, but a shot by Junior Lake. And the numbers impressive in the last four games. He's hit Dodger pitching very well. And in this series, one out of four in the stolen base department so far. Cole Gillespie steps in against Capuano. Capuano lives in the high 80s and a kind of a pinpoint pitcher. Well, he's one of those guys that, as a hitter, you get yourself out against Capuano. You get aggressive. You start to expand the zone. You think you're gonna you're gonna take him out into the seats, and before you know it, you're 0 for 3 or 0 for 4 with a couple groundouts. A good move to first. Gillespie had three hits in yesterday's game with a couple of doubles and an RBI. His first hit of the year came against the Dodgers. Picked up before the All Star break from the Giants. Waves at that one. Capuano has survived two Tommy John surgeries. So he has become a workout fiend to stay in the best physical condition he can in between starts. Was out of the starting rotation for a while because of Stephen Fife. He will now pitch tomorrow for the Dodgers. The 0 2 towards short. Handley Ramirez to second, and they turn the double play. Good defense from the Dodgers, but a little bit of a different alignment. Carl Crawford, of course, in left with Ethier in center at Quig at right, but Skip Schumacher. 
at second base for Mark Ellis and Jerry Harrison Jr. to start over at third instead of Juan Uribe. Tim Fedorovich, the catcher that Capuano is comfortable with behind the plate. Don Mattingly said, I'm not a personal catcher kind of guy, but they do well together. Well, they do well together. And, and as you mentioned, Chris, you know, four of the guys, including the catcher, that are out there today in that infield are not everyday guys. But that's some of the depth that has been presented in this run right now the Dodgers have. And for the Cubs, we mentioned with all the talk around the trade deadline, fans aware by now that Alfonso Soriano gone and Matt Garza and Scott Feldman. But they had a winning month of July, had a very successful road trip. As Dale Swaim is working with his young team and adjusting that roster. As Anthony Rizzo with a fly to shallow left that Crawford is in on. And we are scoreless after one inning. Dodgers and Cubs at Wrigley. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser. It's sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. And by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live months. Along with Eric Karros, Chris Myers, and fans, Dodger fans here in Chicago. Now that's Mike Fox with the white, white shirt with the blue and then the popcorn box. That's his son. And we're not making this up. His son's name, his given name is Dodger Fox. The youngster joined the popcorn. That's how you get on national television, folks. That's a name for life, though, right? You know, I mean, one TV appearance. <laughs> Maybe if you get some time on uh, in the field at Dodger Stadium, it makes a lot of sense. Good luck to the young man. We have our own uh, Fox Dodger and Eric Carros. Who you were telling me on the ride into the ballpark, too, how much you enjoyed your season in Chicago. Very successful. Season, which we'll talk a little bit more about this ballpark and the changes in the future that they're going to make to improve it, but keep the, the character and charm in place. Speaking of the Cubs, a one time Cub, Jerry Hairston Jr., playing third base for the Dodgers, played for the Cubs in 05 and 06, leading off the second against Jeff Samarja. Hairston had a pinch hit in the first game of the series, a two run sixth inning single. Also appeared as a pinch hitter yesterday. Jeff Samarja pointed out to me that as good as this Dodger lineup is, Eric, that without Matt Kemp, he said, I get a break. Because anytime he's in the lineup, he's amazed how well this lineup is doing without him. Well, and again, whether Matt Kemp is producing or not, his presence in the lineup impacts the rest of the ball club. 
And, you know, during this stretch where they, they are 29 and 7, you know, Matt Kemp did play a few games. He played 11 games. In those 11 games, three home runs, 10 RBI. The 2 1. And a hitter's count for Jerry Hairston. There were base runners in the opening inning for the Dodgers, but nothing developed. Hairston with a walk. Let's get a game break. Matt Vescursion at the MLB Network Studios. Matt? Chris Rangers and ace Matt Garza hadn't given up a first inning run since July 5th of last season. Today he's given up three in Oakland, two on this Yoannis Cespedes home run. Three nothing A's early on. Chris and Eric back to you guys at Rigby. Thank you Matt and the Angels a disappointment in that division but who ends up winning it can the A's hold on over the Rangers well the A's look like I just the Rangers have been in such a rut lately Ron Washington has done a fantastic job with that club over the years I, I expect that thing to come down to the finish I know Matty V back in the studio he's rooting on those swinging A's he's the team. <laughs> Matt Vesker is a one time Hollywood child actor and now a big time talent for Major League Baseball on Fox. Skip Schumacher is in. Comes in hitting 263, a couple of homers. And he was one of those guys, Schumacher, when the Dodgers were struggling with injuries, he and Nick Punto, who were supposed to be fill in reserves, were playing every day and, and doing their part for Don Maddox. Yeah, it's almost like you got to go in and, and renegotiate. You're playing too much. You know, you didn't <laughs> sign up for this. But you no, know, those guys, I, I think one of the things that that has helped this ball club is those guys did get a lot of bat at bats early on in the season. And so now. You know when they are used they they've got some numbers under their belt. You see Matt Kemp right there. You sit next to Juan Uribe wearing a protective boot with yep. that bad ankle and told me he'd be back before August but that's him talking. Swung on missed. So Marja gets the strikeout of Skip Schumacher. Well, and you mentioned that you talked to Samarja yesterday, and he felt like if he was getting that splitter, that fork ball over, and if it was doing its thing, he'd be effective. That pitch right there went to the splitter. Got Schumacher. Scott Van Slyke, who was a late ad over at first base today. In this series, he's played a couple of different outfield spots. He steps up to bat. Check of the runner. Ooh. Castillo's throw made it close. And, and this is something that the first baseman and catcher put on before the pitch. So Rizzo gets over there. He set himself up nicely. Left hander can just drop the ball down right in front of the base. See, Harrison does a nice job getting his right hand just in front of the tag. Castillo's like, ah, come on. Ah, darn it. Castillo has already thrown out a Dodger base runner. Got Crawford in the opening inning. And, and what that does is now if you're Harrison, you've got to shorten up that secondary lead. You can't get such a big jump. So maybe Van Slyke hits that ball in the alley because you have shortened up a step or two. Cubs may save themselves a run. No stolen bases or attempts for the 37-year-old Harrison so far this season. Scott Van Slyke a little bit close. Of course, the 27 year old son of Andy Van Slyke. And Scott grew up in the St. Louis area, but this is the first time he's ever actually been to Wrigley Field as the Dodger trip this weekend. He was in right field Thursday and left field yesterday, and now he starts at first. In there for a strike. Well, he's done a nice job since he's been up with the Dodgers, and, and, and it's had a few trips this year, but the slugging percentage over 500 provides a good option for Don Mattingly. His second start of the year at first base. And that is foul. Well, starting today for Adrian Gonzalez, as Don Mattingly mentioned, you know, Adrian just wasn't so sure today that he was ready to go. Plus, he's been playing all the time, the travel. And earlier this week, Don Mattingly said, Adrian Gonzalez is my MVP for the ball club this year. And that's big news. It really is. With Hanley Ramirez and Puig and some of the pitching performances 
Well, and, and I, I think, you know, you can go Kershaw or Gonzalez. I mean, Kershaw has just been lights out all year. I mean, again, the one loss record, not great, but Cy Young Award written all over his season so far. And Gonzalez has been there the entire time, hasn't had the roller coaster season, has been consistent, leads the team in RBIs, and swinging the bat well, affected with runners in scoring position. Back in the batter's box. Scott Van Slyke at a 3 2 pitch headed his way with Jerry Hairston at first and one down. We're scoreless in the top of the second. And you got to send Hairston here. Samarja thinking the same thing. Samarja was talking about the aggressive Dodgers not only on the base pass, he said as a team, they hit mistakes better than any team, pitching mistakes in the game right now. He with a ball four walks Van Slyke. Let's check the four keys to the game. Well, the Dodgers, they've got to be patient. And, and what I mean by that, let Samarja get himself in trouble. Two walks already this inning. Yesterday against the Cubs, they drew four consecutive walks to score a run. The Cubs give nothing. Give nothing means don't give free passes. Don't walk, people. Don't give away outs. That means field the ball cleanly and at the very least, don't get caught up in the base running debacle. We saw a player get caught up in that yesterday. He's no longer with the Cubs, Julio Borbon. You'll give nothing and like it. Give nothing and like it. Yes. Borbon set down another roster change. The Cubs have used 47 different players in uniform this year. That equals the most of any major league team. As Tim Fedorovic, the Dodger backup catcher, in for A.J. Ellis today. And a 1 0 count. The pitcher, Chris Capuano, is due up next. So, situation where Samarja can get out of trouble. Well, he can. He, you know, he's. It's one of those things where you get greedy because you want it. Maybe you can induce a double play. You have the pitcher leading off the next inning, or do you be careful? Don't give Fedorovich anything good to hit. You've got Capuano up next. It's, it's one of those things where sometimes the ego can get in the way. He's ahead in the count, one and two. Only three swings in a 17 pitch inning. And the count even now at two and two. You know, if anything, you start to elevate pitch count. It yesterday the Cubs, Travis Wood, 41 pitches in the third inning. And the home plate umpire was hearing it from both benches. Swung on and missed. Third strikeout already for Fedorovich. Get ready, fans, for Fox Sports 1, America's new 24 hour sports network. Fox Sports 1 will be your home for great live sports, news, highlights, shows, the kind of specials that only Fox can bring you. America's new sports network. It's Fox Sports 1 coming August 17th, your 24 hour sports alternative. Capuano steps in. One for 15. And he does have a career home run. Two out and two on. In a scoreless second inning. All the way. You mentioned Clayton Kershaw. We're going to be talking with him from the Dodgers side. And in the next inning, David DeJesus. Not in the lineup for the Cubs today. He'll be joining us live. He's just one of the steadier players for the Cubs from start to finish when he's been out there for Dale Swain. The 0 2. Another strikeout for Samarja. And we're going to the bottom of the inning. Cubs coming to the bat. Squirrels.
Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Cubs bat in the bottom of the second. Wellington Castillo has hit cleanup only once before. David DeJesus will be joining us live on the headset as he is looking on with Eric Karras, Chris Myers. Uh, David, how are you? Oh, there you go. There it is. Is, is that Edwin Jackson with the <laughs> sunflower seeds? There they are again. Yeah. Uh, look, acting all innocent. Hey, what, what do you see it from uh, Capuano early? You know, he's uh, mixing in his change up a lot. You know, um, he has good sync on it. He's able to spot his fastball where he wants to. So, you know, he's just, just a solid veteran that uh, knows how to pitch. Well, talking about being a veteran, you're, you're a veteran ball player on this ball club, and you kind of see the direction where the you know where the Cubs are headed. How do you fit in in the future? I mean, are you are you becoming one of those the mentor? Or, I mean, you, you're still a great everyday player. I mean, where do you see yourself? I think he got high it. and deep. Is it in the park? And yes, it yeah. is. The wind. Look like at the flag, guys. <laughs> guys, look at the flag before you get excited. Exactly. We get to the park and we check the flag, and we're like, ball goes up like that trajectory. That ain't leaving. I thought David DeHaze was going to call his first home run as an announcer. <laughs> That'd have been pretty nice, you know. But um, you know, right now, you know, you can see what Theo and Jed and you know the whole Cubs organization is moving toward. It. They're moving towards the younger, you know, generation. And um, I feel that I'm the type of guy that's going to, you know, lead by example. I've, you know, I have time in the major leagues, so I'm taking uh, in one of our young guys, Anthony Rizzo, on my wing and try and teach him how to, you know, to play the game the right way and how to prepare yourself on and off the field. So, and, um, but I understand that I want to play every day, too. I want to be out there in the field and um, playing the game and playing the game I grew up loving and, um, you know, hope to be here for a long time. Starlin Castro steps in uh, facing a... 1-0 pitch from Chris Capuano, and that's in there for a strike. David, we we heard your name as Eric mentioned, and others around the trade deadline. Seems like a number of Cubs, but because I heard you, some teams wanted you, but just because you weren't traded, then there's still a chance, right? Even though you would want to remain a Cub. Uh, so how does that affect your play and some of the other guys are the rest of the way for this team? No, I don't think it affects it at all. You know, our job is to be professional, prepare ourselves for every game, and you know that's all I can do. All I can worry about is my uh, you know, everyday activities and go out there, give my best, play hard, and then after that, you know, let the chips fall where they are. And and um, we have a bunch of guys that are, you know, great players, and I want to be a cup for the rest of my career, but I understand the game too. But, um, you know, it's just, let's just have fun and let's just keep winning some ball, game, some well, ball games. You, you know, you just said something where you, you said you want to be a cup the rest of your career. I, I played here for one season, and I always felt like every Every major league player should get to spend one summer in Chicago and playing for the Cubs. Yep. And so where do you weigh that balance of, say, a team wants to trade for you and they're in a playoff run or it's staying here with the Cubs? I mean, what, what do you do? You know, that's at that point you have to talk to your agent, you know, and, uh, and kind of, you know, and my family, you know, um, especially living from this area. You know, it's a hometown team. You know, I have a wife and a three-year-old son that, you know, love coming to the ballpark, and you know it's funny. My my son, when they sing the seventh inning stretch, he loves screaming out the Cubbies part. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so it'd be weird for him to have, say any other team. But you know, you just get away the pros and cons, and then and then see. You know, but ultimately we play baseball to win a championship. Starlin Castro reaches, and it is ruled a hit. Capuano had a chance on the slow roller to get him at first, so he is on with one up. Well, and really a tough play for Van Slyke because, see, that ball is running away. He's the right-handed first baseman, so the glove is on the left hand. He reaches across. If Adrian Gonzalez is out there, he's got the glove on the right hand. It's a much easier stretch, much easier catch for him. Gonzalez, a... Uh, Former Gold Glove winner, and again, just the second start at first this year. They had five starts last year at first base for Andy Van Slice. And now it's Nate Sheerholz in a scoreless game. Cubs with a man on and one down, and talking and watching with David DeJesus. As Capuano is going to check the runner. First, David, you, we mentioned the wins, and you played this outfield. We look at the flags and Eric Carroll's, but tell us a little bit about what it's doing today or how a hitter gauges it. You know, it's one of those. Once you get to the park, you check the flags, and you know that today, any trajectory on the ball, the ball's not going anywhere. 
it's going to start coming back. So you have to keep your approach, staying on top of the ball, line drives the other way. Because home runs, are just only, if, if you square one up, it has to be a low liner. And those are the only ones that go on these type of days. So give, give me the scouting report on Junior Lake. I mean, we've all we've heard all the superlatives. Give me give me some dirt on Junior Lake. Come on. <laughs> I don't know too much, but whatever he's doing, he needs to just keep doing every day. It's you know it's fun to see a guy that come up that comes up and and shows this off right now. It's you know you see guys come up struggling, but you see him and he's playing the game the right way. You know, jumping up, jumping into the stands to catch balls. You know, he's playing all facets of the game right now really well. And, you know, we just hope he keeps progressing, keep uh, learning, you know, as he's on the job. And are you, you know, are, wait, Dave, are you just talking well about him right now? Because he's sitting next he's to right you. Yeah. Come on, he's right here, you know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he's already. <laughs> I, I, he's just playing like he doesn't know, yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't speak English. No, yeah, know. you know, he's speaking, he understands good English right now. <laughs> exactly. He knows, <laughs> he knows fastball now and yeah. <laughs> Just square it up. You always, sure. you always hear the compliments <laughs> in, in any language. Uh, the one-two pitch here exactly. to Sherholtz coming up is Junior Lake and David DeJesus. <laughs> Look on. I want to ask you about the Dodger rookie hotshot, Yasiel Puig. You obviously have been around David, seen guys come up and uh, flash, and you look at all the skill set that you talked about with a guy like Junior Lake from what you've seen from Puig so far. What wows you? You know, just his, his love for the game. You know, he just goes out there and was a spark plug. You know, they were down at that, you know, early in the season. And uh, talking with Trey Hillman, he was my manager back in Kansas City, and he was that spark plug that got this team, you know, go moving in the right direction. And you can see, you know, with his arm, his, his speed, his the way he can drive balls out to every part of the field. It's it's really impressive, and it's it's similar to Mike Trout. You know, I, I'd compare them pretty good because you know they can play every part of the game well. And Puig is due up second. You see him in right field when the Dodgers. Bat in the next inning. So he's worked the count. Sure holds to 2 2 on Capuano, and that is foul. I, I got to ask you about Puig. It's, as an opposing player, I mean, sure, he's fun to watch, but do does the way he play the game, you know, rub you the wrong way at all? I mean, I, I've heard so far. If he's on your team, you love him. If you're playing against him, eh. You know, it's you gotta respect. I respect everyone. You know, that's that's his maybe his type of chip on his shoulder, type, as we would say. Right. But um, you know, uh, sometimes as as an opposing time, you know, as a hitter and base runner, you kind of have to watch him because he might get crazy with the throw, might try and you know steal bases, and he might uh, make easy outs. So you just gotta be ready for anything with him, pretty much. So he fouled one to the right. Nate Sherholtz fouls one to left. The count is 2 2. Second on this Cup team in home runs with 14. Capuano, 23 pitches here as we're in the bottom of the second. And he gets the strikeout for out number two. Well, Sherrill's had been fouling a few off. Here he goes with an off-speed pitch. Gets him out in front. We heard that. We heard the groan in the background by David. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> and, and change ups, right? Was that a change up? Yeah, it looked yeah. like it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a tough pitch, man. You see it coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And nope, there it goes. <laughs> Cody Ransom steps in, playing third base today. 0 for six in the series. Pitch from Capuano with two down after his first strikeout. That is a ball. We're going to thank David DeJesus for his time for joining us live and good luck the rest of the season. Enjoy the, you know, wherever you may be and hopefully it is in Chicago, David. We appreciate your time. Yeah, All thank right. you very much, David. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Insight analysis from a guy who was in the lineup, was in the outfield watching with us as the Cubs fail to advance the runner. Haven't even been able to get to what you talked with Dale Swam about, which the Cubs, despite that winning month of July, just getting hits with runners in scoring position. Yeah, it really struggled. It's interesting because they're next to last in the National League, only one team below them, and you'd be surprised that team. What is the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Pirates? Well, you know.
They're having a great season this year. But that does, it becomes frustrating because you, you're constantly putting runners out there. In fact, yesterday, the, the Cubs out hit the Dodgers. But they only put two runs up on the board because they could not get that breakthrough hit. Should Ransom reach Darwin Barney, then Samarja. Swung on, missed. Chris Capuano is a guy who works the corners, and nibbles. It was telling me that, you know, usually I get to the sixth or seventh, they, the Dodgers are ready to take me out. But I, when I get to the seventh and the eighth inning, that's when the adrenaline flows. I want to be out there. I have to show them that I can go 100, 110 pitches. He's throwing his 29th here. And that's foul. You know, I, I think that that's commendable that you, you want to go, you want to pitch the entire game. But the Dodgers in this stretch, their bullpen has been fantastic. And there's no reason not to utilize those guys. And that's what I think Don Mattingly has done. You give you give Don Mattingly six innings and your name isn't Kershaw, that's great. You can go to that bullpen, they've been lights out. Why not use it? The 2 2 pitch from Chris Capuano. And he's gone full. We'll be talking with Clayton Kershaw coming up in the bottom of the third inning. Capuano was telling me that when he pitched for the Brewers, is when he sensed a, such a rivalry with the Cubs. And that created a comfort level for him to come to Wrigley Field. And pitch well here. And as we mentioned, his nine wins against the Cubs, his most victories against any one team. Toward third, Hairston has trouble, and everybody safe. Two on and two out. It's an error on Hairston. Well, tough for Hairston because he gets that hop that just eats him up. He's moving backwards. And that ball just kind of scoots up off of the dirt. Doesn't really have much of a play once he doesn't come up with it cleanly. And a guy who moves all over the yeah. place. That's his job to pinch hit to go where they need you in the outfield wherever. I mean that's a tough play for an everyday third baseman. 76th error for the Dodger team this year. The Brewers worst in the National League at 82. As Darwin Barney is in. Dodger defense has not been. A strong point this season. No, it hasn't. But again, I, I keep going back to this run that they've been on. There've only, been only three National League teams that had fewer errors during that stretch. You know, they have shored up the defense, and you know Hanley being out there at short has created some consistency. Benarovich in front of it. Since July 1st, the Dodgers a 21 and 6 record. That's nearly 800 ball, but. If you go back to June 21st, both the Dodgers and the Cubs were 12 games under 500. Dodgers have zoomed to the top spot in their division. Cubs have actually played pretty good baseball, 500 ball, but dug a hole. Yeah, well, the big difference is the Cubs are playing in the National League Central. The Dodgers are playing in the National League West, and all those teams went right in the tank. That National League Central with the oh. Pirates, who you mentioned, the Reds, the Cardinals, Dodgers had a Exciting series with the Reds. Capuano, 25 pitches so far in the second inning. Don Mattingly watched him only throw nine in the first. Toward short and handled. Capuano in a little bit of trouble, but gets out of it. We're scoreless going to the third. Yasiel Puig. He already has a base hit. What's he going to do when he comes to the plate?
Football, presented by Budweiser. Scoreless is Carl Crawford. Gets the Dodgers going against Jeff Samarja. He singled off Samarja, and I mean literally off his body to start the game, but was thrown out trying to steal. Crawford turns 32 years old on Monday. And fouls that off. He helped keep the Dodgers intact to start the season when there were a number of injuries before Ramirez was in the lineup, before Puig was called up, but then missed the month of June with a back injury. Towards second, Arwen Barney throws him out. Yasiel Puig had to hit his first time up, but he has 11 home runs already in 52 games. Well, you extrapolate that over the year, and that's a 30 home run plus, and you look at that. All I'm saying is thank goodness he doesn't have 30 home runs because we'd still be watching that video right now. <laughs> a powerful swing. And he's going to bunt toward third. Got it. Oh, he's safe at first. Cody charged it through. And the first base umpire, who's the crew chief. Jerry Lane says he's in there. And right on cue after we show the home run <laughs> video, take that, Fox. He drops a button. And it, you know, that's one of the special things about him is he can beat you in so many different ways. Cody Ransom coming in, he bare hands it. He just beats the throw. Uh, he is clearly safe. For a guy 6'4, 245, or 6'3. Put him on those uh, Sunday games that you're going to be broadcasting pretty soon in the <laughs> NFL, huh? Well, I, you know, I got to see Bo Jackson play in person, both football and baseball, and I could see the physical comparisons as Hanley Ramirez steps in. I, I, I could see the physical comparisons as well, but uh, Puig is a baseball player. And I, I, Bo Jackson was just brute strength, raw talent, and, and just forced his way to start. Now, Puig, he's the guy. Yeah. When I asked the Dodgers about, do you have signs with his base run? Is we put a hold on him because that otherwise he'll run until you stop him. A high pop. Darwin Barney calling for it in the sun, and that's out number two. A big out getting Ramirez. So Andre Ethier comes to the plate. Let's check in with Matt Vasgersian for an MLB Network game break. Chris, the latest on the Alex Rodriguez PED saga. FoxSports.com's Ken Rosenthal has confirmed a New York Daily News report that in light of comments Rodriguez made last night alluding to a conspiracy to keep him off the field, Major League Baseball is now rejecting any negotiations for a suspension settlement. Instead, the league plans on moving forward Monday with suspending Rodriguez for the rest of the year and for the entire 2014 season. Big news. Chris, back to you and Eric. That is major news, and I watched Alex Rodriguez's news conference uh, last night, and he seemed rather confident that he would be back with the Yankees, but that update tells us otherwise. We're scoreless in the third. Puig is at first with two down. And Andre Ethier, who is one for six in his career against Jeff Samarja in the cleanup spot. Ethier has hit just one home run in 20 games at Wrigley Field. Has hit seven home runs this season. Samarja told me he was looking at some film on Puig, the way he ran the bases. <laughs> it was difficult to de detect. Well, again, I, I, I think if anything, Puig is, is just, he's unpredictable. And that's what makes him so dangerous, both good and bad. His personal story arriving with the Dodgers through Mexico, from Cuba. A lot still unknown about the, how the 22 year old did get here. There was a story of the Coast Guard in one of his attempts to defect from Cuba where he was sent back in 
tattered clothes, his belongings in a garbage bag, but eventually made it to the U.S. and to the big leagues. And the Dodgers are glad he did. We'll be talking to Clayton Kershaw in the next half inning, the Dodger ace, about the impact of Puig, the timing of Puig and Hanley Ramirez's healthy return has injected this Dodger team. Well, going for their 13th straight win on the road. Yeah, when Puig came up, they didn't all of a sudden go on a, an instant winning streak. But what he did provide was just energy. You know, when teams are losing, when they're not playing well, they just look lethargic. Whether they are or they aren't, what he brought was excitement. Swung on and base hit right field. Now watch Puig. He's not hesitating. On his way to third. And the ball gets away as Puig is safely in at third with Ethier stopping at first. So runners at the corners with two down for Jerry Harrison. So you watch Puig. There's no hesitation from the get go. He's going to end up at third. You see this ball hits him. Slides safely into third, but never any doubt that, in his mind at least, he was going to third base. The way he plays, you know, Vince Scully refers to him as kind of the wild horse. And when I asked Don Mattingly about, do you want to kind of break him in? He said, no, I just want to corral, corral yeah. him. <laughs> Even when he slides, it's an aggressive adventure. Jerry Harrison walked in the second inning, has a chance to give the Dodgers the lead, but two down. He mentioned earlier, Harrison had the big pitch hit on Thursday. Drove in two runs to help the Dodgers. You see that wide open right side of the infield. Barney shading up towards the middle. Margin nearing 50 pitches in a scoreless third. Jerry Harrison related to his brother Scott, son of Jerry Harrison, grandson of Sam Harrison, and the nephew of John Harrison, but not related to Happy Harrison. The one time Laker who was, oh, as that dribbles toward right, and here comes Puig. Ethier is caught between third and second, and they get it. But the Dodgers on the Hairston hit get Puig home and lead 1 0. And we'll be talking with Clayton Kershaw as the Cubs bat coming up.
Welcome back to Wrigley Field. Dodgers with a 1 0 lead off of uh, Jeff Samarja, who steps into bat against Chris Capuano. With Eric Carroll's Chris Myers. Swung on toward right. Sky toward Puig. Is it fair or foul? He goes up against the wall, the wall on a foul ball. He made the catch. Puig has shown he's a guy who will run through a that, wall for ridiculous. you. That's ridiculous. So he, he knocks it up in the air. Oh, no, he's not. No, that's not. It hit the wall. Well, let's the see wall. if they go argue that. And here comes Dale Swain. And yeah, you, you see off the wall. Off the wall. Yeah, but he, I mean, he sold it like he <laughs> caught it. Looked like it had hit his glove first. But Swain was going to say, wait a minute. Oh, look at this. This is, this is where they bring out instant replay. We'll take another look at this. Clayton Kershaw is joining us from the dugout. Clayton, your uh, your view of this? Uh, zero. Yeah, he has no, <laughs> zero visibility. Thank yeah. you for your honesty. Yeah, I don't know. Off his glove. That was. Yeah. You said he couldn't play in the NFL, or that he wasn't. No, a I said was, he should be playing on Sunday. Looks like a receiver. No, so what he did, Clayton, he 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 can't. It hits his glove, then it hits the wall, and then it bounces off the wall, and right before it hits the ground, he catches it and he shows it, like, hey, I got it, I got it. Yeah, well, uh, he yeah, sold it. I'm telling you. You could sell it, but the ball is dead if it hits the wall first. The ball is not dead unless the umpire says something. Right now, they're calling that a catch. Oh, they're going to huddle right now. Yeah, I don't know if that's reviewable. I guess no, they it's can. not. Not reviewable. Not, no, not no, yet. No, but not that's, that. You got a home run. A home run. That's it. We saw Thursday night Junior Lake in left field. Uh, Clayton go up against the wall and make a, a catch where he he said, "Oh, now I realize there, there's a wall behind that padding." Yeah, not a good place to try to run into walls, whether it's out in the field with the ivy or even. That's not padding. I mean, I don't know what that is. That's just something to hide the bricks. But that, you know, and Puig going in in that spot. I mean, there's something to be said about playing hard. And I, I'm totally for you got to play hard all the time. But it's more important for Puig to be on the field for the next 50 some odd games than to make a catch right on the side here in, in August. You know, I mean, that's there's something about playing smart. Yeah, playing and understanding, you know, going all out in the right situation as they huddled to discuss. Now, if the if the ball had gone off his glove in fair territory and then hit the wall, then that it's would still, be different. No, once, no, once it hits the wall, it's. But it, but it hit his glove first, then the wall. It doesn't make a difference. Once it hits the. Oh, you're saying yeah. whether fair or foul. That ball was foul. Clayton, that was a great uh, discussion we just had. That was yeah, good. I'm glad I, you're uh, on right now. Well, you know, I guess the only thing I could say. <laughs> I was thinking about what I could cut in and say. I guess the thing with Puig is that you can't really, it's hard to take a guy's aggressiveness away and tell him to keep playing the same, you know. So you're going to take the good with the bad. You're going to take the base room mistakes. You're going to take the run in the wall. I completely agree with you. We need him out there for the next 50 games. But, you know, playing that way, you know, that's that's what we want too. You know, we don't want him to uh, come up short or not dive for a ball or something like that either. So uh, I think we're going to take the good with the bad. While we're talking about Puig, I I've got to ask you, as a teammate, you love him. But if you're pitching against him and you watch the way he plays, is there a little different feel or? Yeah, th there's definitely some swagger involved. You yeah, know, he, uh, <laughs> you know, he's got he's got some of that, but that's good. You know, that's the confidence. And yes, I understand the other team, but every team's got one guy that you're just like, really? He's got this in him. And then, you know, for us, it's been awesome. We needed it. We needed a little boost. We needed some confidence. We needed some swagger. And, uh, you know, it's it's been helping. So the 0 one pitch. And this is not foul. Sky toward Schumacher at second calling for it. And we uh, get the out after that ball. That call was reversed to a foul ball. You saw Jerry Lane, the crew chief, discussing with Don Mattingly. We're discussing with the Majors ERA leader. 71 wins and only 25 years old. The Cy Young Award winner in 2011 and the runner up in 2012. And the way things are going, uh, Clayton, I, I know it's about just winning. Just tell us about what's different about on the road with this team. Seems like you could play on Pluto and win, but what about the uh, the road success? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think uh, we've been playing well everywhere. Um, you know, we've played against some good teams at home and, uh, you know, run into some buzzsaw, some aces at home and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, for whatever reason right now, it's uh, it's working and we just happen to be on the road. I don't know if there's a trick to it or anything, but uh, we'll take it. And Junior Lake is up. He singled his first time with one out. Speaking of Pluto, you were on Jimmy Kimmel Live, entertaining in a number of ways, but you talked about your your great uncle who was an astronomer who 
discovered Pluto and then later some scientists said no it's just a, a dwarf planet. <laughs> yeah I got Pluto some press time out there. That was great. <laughs> That's good. Well so is the family upset about this. Uh, you know I probably blew it up a little bit on camo for fun but uh, you know I, it's definitely it was a blow to the Tombaugh Kershaw side of the family <laughs> for sure. Well you're a star in the family we know that much. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so you, the numbers you're putting up this year I, I, you know just when you think you've seen it all as a fan. You're putting up even better numbers than you have in the past few years. Do you feel like you're pitching better or any differently than you did the last couple of seasons? Poor Cappy. Um, Gets the strike out there. You, you know, I don't know, Eric. I think uh, I think consistency is the only thing I'm going for every fifth day. You know, I want to go pitch seven, eight, nine innings every single time out, and I feel like if I'm doing that, our team's going to have a good chance to win. And you know, that's really the only goal. I don't really set a whole lot of individual stuff, but you know, every time out there, try to get as deep into the game as possible, and good things are going to happen. And I don't know if there's a big difference between this year and last year, but uh, you know, for now, it's it's going okay. Cole Gillespie steps in with two down. And spoken, spo no, spoken like a true <laughs> baseball player. It's going okay. It's going okay. It's going okay. You're sizzling here. Hey, and, and uh, I guess Mattingly confirms that Stephen Fife is pitching tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. And so that'll move Granky back to start against the Cardinals, and then you get a little extra day's rest. And I think that's something the Dodgers staff wants to do in August, whether you're tired or not. You've been going into the late innings, uh, uh, Clayton, and that's got to help you out for the stretch run. Uh, you know, I think uh, Zach and I will take an extra day when we can get it. I think we both feel great, though. And, uh, you know, the, the innings aren't the problem. I think you just kind of got to look at the stressful innings. You know, the guys are on base, things like that. You know, you're throwing 25, 30 pitches an inning. Those are the problems. But if you're throwing 10, 15 pitches an inning for nine innings, you know, you feel great the next day. Well, good luck the rest of the way. Keep up the good work. Thanks for joining us. All right, appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Clayton Kershaw as Capuano gets the strikeout right on cue. His third strikeout protecting a 1 0. Dodger lead as we go to the fourth at Wrigley. Sponsored by T-Mobile. Now your choice is simple. T-Mobile Unleash. And by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network. Coming August 17th. Dodgers with a 1-0 lead in the fourth. Skip Schumacher, who struck out his last time against Jeff Samarja, leading things off for the Dodgers. Schumacher. Key member of that 2011 Cardinals World Series team, hitting 381 in the postseason. Just trying to get the Dodgers going here, and a foul ball. In fact, he drove in the 
winning run on that decisive game five with the Phillies back in 2011. Spent 12 seasons in the Cardinal organization, but he's a California guy. Grew up a Dodgers fan in Redondo Beach and then went to UC Santa Barbara. Yeah, his uh, brother or cousin, they run uh, the refinery and baseball school in Torrance. Still has his roots there in Southern California, obviously. It's Schumacher, then Scott Van Slyke and Tim Fedorovich. As Capuano has the one nothing advantage for the Dodgers. Going for their 13th straight road win to set a franchise record. It's foul. In fact, it was the Brooklyn Robins who last won 12 in a row on the road. And, and you know, I, I was reading something where they had, I believe it was five double headers during that stretch. And of those five double headers, they played, I believe, four of them on consecutive days. How's that for them? It's pretty impressive. The 3 2. Schumacher works a walk. Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, celebrating a new season for new memories for your chance to win a community field makeover and an all new 2014 Impala. Visit ChevyBaseball.com. Third walk of the game for Jeff Samarja. Van Slyke walked his last time. Well, you, you, five hits, three walks, and you don't have an out in the fourth, and you've only given up one run. You got to feel like you're dodging some bullets. Looking to bunt, and Samarge is a guy who strikes out nine hitters per nine innings. At least those have been the numbers over the last two years. He's one of only 11 starters in Major League Baseball. Has been that good or has not a rebound? Well, he, he's an on what I call an uncomfortable at bat. As a hitter, you don't like digging in against Jeff Samarji. He's got great stuff, but he can get himself into trouble because he can be erratic. An awkward moment for Van Slyke, and it's one and one. When I asked Jeff Samarji, you know, his name, not heavy trade talk, but the Diamondbacks expressed interest, said the Cubs' asking price was too much. And I asked Samarji if he wanted to be a Cub for life. He said, I want to be a winner for life. And that means he wants to be here when the Cubs win. That was one way of looking at it. Dale Swain said he's our number one guy to build around. If it's up to me, I don't want to trade him. The one one, held on. No, and he, the way Dale Swain described him is he's the guy that can, you know, in a five game or seven game series, you know, he can throw three times. You can run him out there. He's young. He's that horse. You can start him a couple times. Bring him in as reliever. I mean, he is, he has the ability to be the ace of the staff. And he's ahead on Van Slyke. The one, two. And he's on. The control a bit off for Samarja. Let's get a game break. The MLB Studios and Matt Vest version. Chris, Texas in Oakland. Jared Parker unbeaten since May 22nd, leading 3 0 until this little looper by Adrian Beltre gets Texas on the board. If the Rangers win today, Ron Washington becomes the Rangers' all time winningest manager. 3 to 1 A's. Chris and Eric, back to you guys. Thanks, Matt. You had some brief time in Oakland as well. I mean, we mentioned I you did. played for the Dodgers and Cubs. Ron Washington, the manager of the Rangers now, was the third base coach. Tim Fedorovich struck out his last time. Four strikeouts for Sabarja, but two on. And nobody out here in the fourth. And last time he came up with runners on first and second. Has an opportunity now to move some runners over, drive them in. You've got Capuano on deck. Fedorovich played 10 games in two prior seasons for the Dodgers. Here he's the regular backup to A.J. Ellis. Both A.J. Ellis and Mark Ellis have been given the day off. Dodgers finish the four game series tomorrow here and then it's on to St. Louis before heading home against the Tampa Bay Rays. 
making things exciting with Boston in the American League East. Well, Samarja looking to induce the double play right here. Looking for some sort of ground ball, keeping the ball down in the zone. The 1 1 pitch. Toward right center field. More toward right and on the run, and the catch made as the runners advance to third. Saturday, August 17th, the premiere of America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. It kicks off with an epic battle. UFC Fight Night live coverage beginning August 17th. It's 8 Eastern. Only on America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. Talk about athletic ability. You were mentioning Puig as a football skill type athlete. Samarja, of course, the Receiver at Notre Dame at his college football playing days was outstanding. From Indiana and and likes this part of the country and this team. One out runners at first and third. But you see Capuano showing but as we mentioned earlier only one hit this season. What you want to do is get that runner to second base let Crawford give you a shot of Getting a base hit, driving into you, do not want to hit into a double play here and just kill the inning. And the Cubs were moving on the bunt. Carl Crawford, the lead-up hitter, leadoff hitter, excuse me, is due up next, provided Capuano stays out of the double play. One out, Schumacher went over to third on the fly ball. There is the bunt. Samarja is going to go to second. It's high and safe. The bases are loaded. Well, Samarja, you know, he tries to make the great play. And for me, early in the game, you just want to make the routine play get outs because now what you've done is you've put yourself in a situation now where you can give up a big inning. You've got the bases loaded, the top of the lineup, you've got one out. Where at the at the worst in that last situation you've got runners on second and third with two outs if you just get the routine play. Sacrifice error on Samarja and the Dodgers staff you know as pitchers 26 sacrifice bunts that's in the top five of the National League Capuano doing his job as Carl Crawford steps in with the bases loaded and one out Crawford one for two had a single in the first was caught stealing. And see what happens here now. Oral Hershiser, the great Dodger pitcher, who I played alongside, used to always tell me when I was a young infielder, don't throw away the game in the first five or six innings. And what he meant by that is, again, don't make a defensive play like that. Just get out. Get out. And now 1-1 one, one on Crawford, who runs well. Discussion out behind second for the Cub infielders. It's outside. I have not seen Samarja pitch a lot this season, but I haven't seen him pitch when this control has been this off. Well, there's a reason he's fourth in the National League in walks. I mean, he has had stretches where he just can't control his pitches. There's no room. For Crawford, no place to put him. Foul off, so it's 2 2. But he's one of those guys, like I said, he's not a comfortable at bat. As a hitter, you know, he could just as easily drill you like he did Van Slyke and also throw three pitches on the outer part of the plate and just leave you standing there. And if he can get through Crawford, Yasiel Puig, who's two for two with some infield hits, is up next. Schumacher's at third. He started it with a leadoff walk. Van Slyke hit with a pitch at second. Chris Capuano reached on the air. He's over at first.
It stays 2-2. Carl Crawford got off to a fast start, hitting over 300 the early portion of the season to them when he had the injury. He says just getting the at bats, he's been struggling at the plate. Came back and then he was sidelined. In fact, in the recent series, had a high fever against the Reds and missed some playing time. Swung on, missed, and a big strikeout, a major moment for Jeff Samarja. Out number two, and Puig. Has already had an adventurous day on the bases. Easy on that slide, getting to third, scored the Dodgers only run. And in the outfield, it's foul, <laughs> but he stays with it. And he showed his 11 home runs. He's also bunted to reach base. He's having a physical game so far. <laughs> Trying to run into walls, getting hit with baseballs. But a spot for the 22 year old to add to the Dodger lead. And as we've seen, especially in his first at bat, where we were able to see a number of pitches, the Cubs showed that they're going to go hard in. And that's where they hope to get Puig out. Held up, it's one and one. When Puig goes after the first two pitches, he reaches more than 50% of the time. With runners in scoring position, he's a 278 hitter. With the bases loaded, he's two for three. Skies this toward the shadows in left and foul. Well, not a huge sample size, but successful with the bases loaded. Two for three. Already a grand slam yeah. in his career. Well, so now if you're smart, you've got to come in off the plate hard with a fastball. If you're going to throw that splitter or fork ball, you better get that thing outside off the plate. They're going hard in off. Two and two to Puig. See if I if I'm catching right now I'm going to go right back in there because it's one of those things oh he just threw it hard in so now that's setting him up for the off speed away I go right back in there hard bases are loaded swung on the work ball Samarja wins the battle Dodgers fail to score but lead one to nothing.
Cup fans enjoying a well pitched game. Samarja getting out of trouble. Chris Capuano with a 1 0 lead and facing Rizzo Castillo and Castro. Here in the bottom of the fourth on a terrific weather day. Wrigley Field in Chicago. National League's oldest park, second oldest park in the National League, Dodger Stadium. But the Dodgers have been comfortable away from home. And Rizzo, who leads the team in home runs, is third in the National League with 50 extra base hits. Hoping to get something going against the lefty. Rizzo hits lefties well. He'll be followed by the cleanup hitter, Wellington Castillo. Back Anthony Rizzo, you heard David DeJesus tell us earlier he's taken him under his wing and signed his contract extension with Castro. That they're the, the core to build on for this young Cup team. Well, a good guy to take under your wing. Probably going to be the cornerstone. Van Slyke at first gets the out. Capuano doing what he has to do. See Rizzo over 50 extra base hits. Big part of the lineup. Got Wellington Castillo coming up. Not your conventional number four hitter, but in there today. Dale well, Swain's lineup. And they're having to work with that spot since the trading of Alfonso Soriano. They just don't have an answer there on a consistent basis. Seventy eighth start of the year for Castillo. It takes a strike who's done well defensively behind the plate. Well, Capuano doing a job so far continuing his Wrigley Field dominance. Five and one here as a starter over his career. A guy who was the valedictorian of his high school class, Cathedral High in Springfield, 1996, went on to Duke, was five beta kappa there. A brainiac athlete, Capuano. In fact, he <laughs> choked about that. The one one gets away, said that his teammates tease him and often say he's the the dumbest smart guy they've ever met. <laughs> I guess that's a way to knock yeah, that guy down to size. Dumbest smart guy. Yeah, he had a sense of humor yeah. about that. But his degree in economics, uh, he said Eric does come into play when you're working with a major league contract. He thinks that all players should be there. Well, I'm going to I'm going to step on that right now because I've got the same degree in economics and I'm telling you unless you're going to teach an economic class about some utopian society is not not going to do it for you. Maybe he just paid more attention in class. <laughs> well, it's, he is the dumbest smart guy there is right. <laughs> now a three two pitch. With one down here in the bottom of the fourth. One out walk. Capuano part of the Dodgers starting rotation after all the headline names of Kershaw and Branke. 336 ERA from that starting rotation. That's fourth best in the majors behind the Pirates, Cardinals, and Reds. And then overall in the last 22 games since July 7th. Dodgers are 18 4 in those games as they've been the best at ERA at 2.30. Well, it's been one of the consistent parts of the Dodgers this entire year is the starting pitching has been there. You know, when they were really struggling, the bullpen was having a lot of issues. But at the end of the day, if you're going to build a ball club, it's got to center around your starting pitching. The Dodgers have had that the entire year. And when I asked Mattingly about the magic on the road, he said, well, it just it's the pitching. It, that doesn't matter where we play, but that holds you up when you're away from home if you struggle in other areas. Here's Castro. Toward third. They get one. They get two. Very efficient. Chris Capuano keeps it a one-nothing. Dodger lead as we get ready to go to the fifth.
In Chicago trying for a franchise record 13 straight road wins. Hanley Ramirez since he came off the disabled list June 4th. Second highest batting average and on base percentage in Major League Baseball. And with the energy of rookie Yesiel Puig Ramirez. He's the guy that the Dodgers say has been the difference maker. 0 for 2 so far against the margin. Well, I, and we talk about difference maker. Offensively, it's been obvious, but defensively, this club really struggled for a good part of the year. But when Hanley has been back at shortstop, you know, it has solidified this defense. And you don't normally think of that with Hanley Ramirez. Darwin Barney throws and got him at first. And the player profile brought to you by AT&T, helping you do what you do even better AT&T rethink possible and the numbers of where he can go a former rookie of the year a three time all star won a batting title as long as he's in the Dodger lineup even when he's 0 for 3 especially with Matt Kemp out of the lineup yeah. it helps everybody Jeff Samarja with six strikeouts so far has walked three and hit a batter Ethier one for two. Held off. Ethier recently given a five year contract extension, 31 years old, went to Arizona State in his eighth year with the Dodgers. Not his best season, does lead the Dodgers in doubles. He's been an all star before in 10 and 11. But when Kemp went out with the injury, he went from right to center field. And has done a decent job out there. In the sun, Castro for out number two. Let's take a look at the Fox Sports One pitcher comparison presented by Fox Sports One, America's new sports network coming this month. Well, only one run scored today, and both of the guys have been effective in their own ways. Samarja, it hasn't been conventional. He's given up some hits, he's walked some. But when he's had to get the big out or the big strikeout, he's done so because he's got that kind of stuff. Capuano, it's Wrigley Field. And he just pitches well here. And as you mentioned at the top of the show, he came into 
this game. 24 innings at Wrigley Field hadn't given up an earned run. And the wind blowing in. Wind has helped. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, there have been a few balls hit that uh, have been knocked down. Two down and an 0 1 count on Jerry Hairston, who's driven in the only run of the game. He knocked in Puig. Ethier was thrown out, caught between second and third. Well, and remember that ball that he hit. That thing just dribbled over to the right side. Nobody playing wide open on that right side. Dar Darwin Barney fields it and then throws the third to catch Andre Ethi. Should Harrison reach Schumacher would be next, who has walked and struck out. Ninety-four mile per hour pitch. On his 83rd pitch. Yeah, and that's 94 with movement. The ball is heavy when it hits the bat. It, again, there's 94, there's 94, there's 90. There's a bunch of different ways to throw 94. And as I said before, it's not fun when you're hitting against the margin. Toward third, Cody Ransom throws out Hairston. The Cubs try and get on the board for their young fans as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Telecast presented by Budweiser, sponsored by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. That's how nice it is here in the Midwest. The Dodgers with a 1 0 lead in the bottom of the fifth. Along with Eric Karras, Chris Myers. This is a Jeff Gallon production directed by Jim Lynch. You see the shadows coming into play here with our 305 local start sign. And Nate Scherholz facing Capuano. Toward short, Ramirez shading the sun and into the shadow makes the grab for out number one. This year, Fox Sports supports proud to partner with Stomp Out Bullying, the leading national anti bullying organization for kids and teens in the U.S. Stomp Out Bullying focuses on preventing all forms of abuse. Digital abuse educates against hatred, racism, deters violence in schools online, and also helps at risk students. If you want to help to learn more, Visit stompoutbullying.org. Cody Ransom steps in for the Cubs. We have just two hits so far. He reached on an error by Hairston, 0 for 1, and has yet to have a hit in the series. Began the year with San Diego. Claimed on 
waivers by the Cubs in mid April. He had nine home runs in his first 97 at bats. But one for his last 30 with no homers and no runs driven in since July 19th. Darwin Barney follows him. I want to go back to the economics. One thing the, the economics degree, the cap water was saying, he thinks agents do a good job, but players. Personally, he said it helped make him more aware about the finances and doing contracts and deals. But you didn't. I'll you, go with you. Yeah, okay, you're going to maybe a little bit. A little bit. All right. Not that you're going to be an <laughs> economics professor. Your TV career is going all right. It's fell off. No, I think just the fact, though, that you know there are very few players. There are a number of college players that get to the big leagues, but go back, get their degrees. Now because this is an environment that the, the shelf life for a baseball player not very long it's a it's lucrative while you're up there but you never know you know that next pitch could be your last that next half at you just it's tough to get to the big leagues even tougher to stay for Chris Capuano option year at the end of this year with the Dodgers so he's not sure of anything the 2 2 and we're going to go full. Now with Stephen Fife starting tomorrow, who's been a guy who's taken Capuano's spot in the rotation, Don Mattingly said that has nothing to do with Capuano being replaced in the rotation. Right, just trying to stretch their guys out as far as rest is concerned. And pitching coach Rick Honeycutt, you know, he's a believer that look, August and September, those are some tough times. A lot of innings, and if you can get a guy a day or two rest, take it. Fouled off. Rick Honeycutt, since he has become the Pitching coach for the Dodgers back in 2006. Whoever the pitchers have been in blue, they have done the job. The ERA among the best, in fact, the best ERA in the game. It's done a good job. Toward left field and a base hit. Holy Ransom hoping he's out of the funk. Cubs get a base runner with one out and Darwin Barney do up followed by the pitcher. He lined to short his first time a 27 year old from Oregon State. You know Fedorovich behind the plate played at North Carolina and went to two college World Series. You're talking about college players both times he said he lost to Oregon State and Darwin Barney on that team and Barney brings it up every time and they run into each other. And I, I, I was there. I was at the College World Series working for another network. And Fedorovich. And Andrew Miller formerly the Red Sox Daniel Bard. They were all at North Carolina Oregon State. Darwin Barney. A couple other guys. I was interested in the other network line. Fox Sports okay. One wasn't around that yet. <laughs> so maybe you'll be busier. The 0 1, the runner held it first by Van Spike. Yeah, one a good move over there. So Marja swinging the bat in the on deck circle. And there's a good shot of the shadows. Affecting more of the hitter, the pitcher. The well, you know, it impacts the, the hitter more, but Capuano is not the type of guy that's got the hard breaking stuff for the real life fastball. So, as a hitter, when you're facing a guy like Capuano, the shadows aren't really going to play a huge role. Now, Samarja, it's already no fun hitting in the sunlight. It's not going <laughs> to be fun hitting in the shadows. Just harder to pick up the rotation. Runner has not shown Ransom any indication that he would be moving on an 0 2 to Barney. And now 1 and 2. And when you're talking about running, the, the Dodger catchers have done a great job, both of them, Ellis and Fedorovich, over 40% caught stealing. You have to credit the pitching staff as well for holding those runners. A high foul pop that is 
out of play. Nice play made in the stands. Cup fan with the Ron <laughs> Santo jersey, beloved former third baseman. Just like Ronnie had made that play. <laughs> Got the right jersey on. That win helping the pitchers today. There's the flag, Ron Sano, number retired. The one two. And now two and two. Half one on nearing 70 pitches here in the fifth inning. I don't think he's hit 89 on the radar gun, but he's got the one nothing lead. Cubs need to get somebody in position so they can test. Foul ball and try to improve the hitting with runners in scoring position. You talked about such a sore spot with this team. Well, today they haven't even had many opportunities. I guess that's a good way not to have it go any lower, right? <laughs> Again, though, it's one of those things you get into a rut, you start pressing as a team. As an individual, you realize you don't do well with runners in scoring position. It sort of snowballs on you. The 2 2, Schumacher flips Ramirez. And a well handled double play as Capuano gets out of trouble once again. We've gone through five. The Dodgers, the upper hand of the pitcher's duel, their defense. Supporting Capuano. We're glad you're watching Saturday Baseball from Rio. Presented by Budweiser and sponsored by AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Bayer, advanced aspirin, the official pain reliever of Major League Baseball. Relief has been a problem for the Cubs bullpen. The starter, Jeff Samarja, hopefully won't have to worry about that despite a high pitch count. He's only down one to nothing. All eight hits for the Dodgers singles four of them infield hits. Skip Schumacher walked. And struck out. It'll be Van Slyke and Fedorovich. 
Dodgers giving the day off to Adrian Gonzalez bothered a little by that neck and shoulder. Nothing serious long term and AJ Ellis and Mark Ellis and Juan Uribe all getting a break on this Saturday afternoon. The Dodgers chasing history going for their 13th consecutive road win the only National League team in the last 56 years to win more than 12 straight on the road the Phillies in 76 they won 13 straight went on to the NLCS a walk for Schumacher let's go around the ballpark take a look at the Fox Sports one fan cam fans excited about America's new sports network Fox Sports one <laughs> Fox Sports One. Just a couple of weeks away. We hope you tune in. Scott Van Slack with a runner at first and nobody out. Eric Karras, Chris Myers, and wherever you're watching, however you're watching, we're glad you're with us for Fox Saturday Baseball. And the Cubs coming off a, a winning month of July, losing the first few in August here to the Dodgers in this four game series. Trail 1 0 here. Talked about the shift in the defensive alignment. And, and they do it for almost every hitter. You see the second baseman, Darwin Barney, shaded right up near second base, that whole right side of the infield just asking for a ball to go through. And Slyke out on strikes after he had reached twice with a walk and hit by a pitch. Makes Sunday extra special. By going out to the ballpark, go to MLB.com slash Sunday and find special ticket offers. Here is Fedorovich, who's 0 for 2, and you see Dodger fans. I went and sat in the stands at Dodger Stadium during the week when the Yankees came in to play the Dodgers, and there's some great seats there. Baseball games are fun regardless of who's playing, where you're sitting. <laughs> There's always a lot going on. Tommy Lasorda. As that is sliced towards right and it's rolling into the corner. It will be cut off by Sheerholtz, but Fedorovich will end up at second and stopping at third is Schumacher. A one out double. Fedorovich does a nice job of driving that ball to right field. Pitches down the middle part of the plate. Sherholtz does a nice job of getting the ball to the cutoff, man. Tim Wallach, the third base coach, halfway down, holding them all the way. Chris Capuano had a sacrifice, but then reached on an error the last time. With one out, a base open. Carl Crawford, the leadoff hitter, due up next. Schumacher was the fourth walk of the game for Samarja. He's at third. And that's the first extra base hit of the game. That double by Fedorovich. Well, they've got the infield in, and you could do two things if you're Don Matting. You could you could go on contact, and if you have both runners go on contact, if you don't get the runner or if the run doesn't score, you still got a guy on third base with Crawford up, or you just hold them and leave them second and third. Swinging away. I mean Schumacher a pretty decent runner if you can get a good lead I, I'd probably go on contact force the Cubs to make a defensive play as we mentioned that you know not the most stealth defensive team playing better as of late but force the issue the 0 2 and the strikeout down to first so two away now for Carl Crawford. Carl Crawford with a chance to add to the Dodger lead. Eight strikeouts now for Samarja. And Crawford, one for three, runs well. A four time All Star. When he was with the Rays, he had four stolen base crowns over nine years and led the American League in triples. In fact, among 
active players. He has more triples than anybody in the game. But when his body's right, he's as exciting a player as there is. He can beat you in so many different ways. But last few years, he's been betrayed by injuries. He, you mentioned just last week he, when he finally started to get things going, took on a fever, sat out a few games, hitting just two under 230 since he came off the disabled list. But as I mentioned, uh, he will turn 32 years old. Happy birthday on Monday to Carl Crawford. And that is a base hit. Here comes one. Here comes Fedorovich. And a clutch hit by Crawford to make it 3 0 Dodgers. They're trying to go in, and it's about the right spot. Comes out a little bit over the plate. Crawford serves it into right field. But Samarja is has been in trouble today. He's had been playing with runners on whether it's the walks the the base hits and it's not as if people have been hitting the heck out of the ball. I mean Fedorovich really smoked the ball but other than that Samar just missed the barrel of the bat for the most part. And that's what he said when facing this Dodger lineup no matter who it is he has to stay out of trouble keep guys off the base paths and he hasn't done that. You knew they'd break through sooner or later the way the Dodgers have been going and there's a liner foul by Puig who's two for three but Samarja got him out when the bases were loaded. I think though that this illustrates what the Dodgers have been doing successfully the last few weeks not relying on just one player. Federovich gets the big double Crawford comes here drives in two runs. Harrison had the RBI single earlier. You said it in the open that it's not just about Puig and Ramirez. No, it's it is. It's a team. Capuano's pitching a great game. You look at that lineup that they're fielding today. You've got four people in the infield counting the catcher that are not regulars. It's a deep ball club. It all started to turn when Puig was called up the energy then the healthy Henley Ramirez and the Dodgers once nine and a half games. Out in the West, lead by three and a half. The Diamondbacks playing the Red Sox later this evening. They're the team closest to Don Mattingly's team in the National League West. A 2 1 count on Yasiel Puig. Showing some patience here. Mark McGuire, batting instructor of the Dodgers, talked about getting Puig to dial it back a little bit. You don't always go 110. We saw him go into the wall. You saw him to swing hard. And he walked him. Talk about a team game. And how a guy can ignite a team. The difference when Puig showed up for the Dodgers and that record. Well, he did. He, he brought the energy, and that's something that, like I said earlier, when you lose, you look lethargic. And they just didn't have that oomph. And, and that's what he brought. And he also brought some competition because he's an outfielder. He thrust his way into the lineup. There's there's some concern with the other guys. Hey, we've got Kemp, we've got Crawford, we've got Ethier, all All Stars, and Puig. That's four outfielders. There's only three spots. And Hanley Ramirez, Samarja, has done the job. 0 for three, but trailing three nothing. Going back to Puig and what McGuire said about dial back a little to 110 percent to protect yourself. He said the next time Puig hit a ball, he he stuck and stood at first and watched watched him ground out and. So McGuire said, "Well, that's 10 percent. You need it's either all or nothing with this guy. He, that's what he seems to grasp, and he's only going to get better. In fact, he compared his tool set. McGuire did Puig's with that of Albert Pujols. The potential. Wow, that's a wow. Now one and one over 100 pitches for Jeff Samarja. 
think they have the hold on Puig here on the, on the base path. <laughs> is, is he I'm take not sure off? where he can go. <laughs> the two guys at second base. <laughs> They're waiting for him. I, the thing is, is you might have to give him the hold here. <laughs> well, he had a situation that he gave the other day at first and third where swung on missed where he took off. Nick Puto got caught at third and thrown out at home when he wasn't supposed to take off. Yeah, I, I've said it ever since I, I saw Puig first come up. He is exciting. If you go watch him, you will see something exciting. I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, <laughs> but it will absolutely be exciting. That's what Mattingly said. Yeah, you heard Kershaw. We take the good with the bad. Fouled off. It's now two and two on Ramirez with two on and two out in the sixth. Make that one and two. Two strikes on Hanley Ramirez. One ball with the Dodgers having added to their lead. It's now three nothing here in the sixth. And Hanley Ramirez is his leadership. All the the things we heard about coming out of the Marlins when the Dodgers made that deal was about a year ago. He's been nothing but a model citizen. Well, I think there's something to be said about the maturity. I think some of the comments coming from the Marlins organization that management probably stung a bit. The other thing, too, Hanley Ramirez has one more year left on his deal. He's, he's under contract through 2014. With what Dodger ownership has to offer as far as their wherewithal, it makes all the sense in the world to be busting your tail day in and day out right now. Came to the Dodgers July 25th of 2012. Nathan Evaldi, the key player to the Marlins, who's now in the Miami rotation. But when he's been healthy, look at the numbers that Hanley Ramirez has put. Those are the numbers, and again, the intangible that you talk about. He said, I'll play anywhere. Shortstop, third. They're just, I don't have to be the guy. I'm just a guy on this team, and he's comfortable with it. Now three and two. Well, that's a beautiful thing about playing on a ball club like this because there's four or five guys in that lineup that are the guy. And you don't have to. You can just be a, a complimentary piece, which takes a lot of the pressure off. It's easier to play. The focus isn't always on you. And it's a great lineup to hit it. And Matt Kemp is not in it right now. The three two to Hanley Ramirez. He steps away. Had a 19 game hitting streak had that string of reaching base 37 straight games that was snapped in early July. 0 for 3 today he has hit Samarja well in his career. Held off. 8 for 15 against Jeff Samarja coming into the game. It's Crawford at second he drove in two. Runner at first is Puig. Quite an at bat. 25 pitches in the inning for Samarja. And Hanley Ramirez pushing him to the limit. Already five walks equals the season high for Samarja in this game. Well, five walks and a hit batter, Vince Like. You mentioned here Ramirez lengthening this at bat. Fouling off more pitches and all that does gives Samarja more of a chance to make a mistake. Driven toward left field, but it is. Oh, no. Fleet was already at third base. There is not a lot of room down that left field line for anything. Anything <laughs> other than what? <laughs> Don't say it. Don't <laughs> than a fan in the, in the left field seat. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to even get near that thought. You see Puig running there. He's got the play in front of him. So this will be the 11th pitch for Samarja at this at bat with Henley Ramirez. Making him work. Ethier, who's one for three, would be next. Swung on, missed. He strikes out Puig to get out of further trouble. Dodgers with a 3 0 lead to the sixth.
break. Braves and Phillies. Philly took an early 3-0 lead, but the Braves have come back to score four unanswered in RBI ground ball off the bat of Evan Gaddis, giving Atlanta a 4-3 lead. Rangers and A's, two teams that started play separated by just two and a half games atop the West. Ian Kinsler's 10th of the year gets Texas a little closer in trying to hand Jared Parker his first loss since May 22nd. As we get you back to Chris and Eric at Wrigley. Thank you, Matt. Bottom of the sixth, the Cubs with only three hits in the game. They've hit into three double plays as Chris Capuano has the shutout going. There was a pinch hitter who grabbed a bat, but then Samarja, after discussion, takes his normal spot at the plate. 0 for 1. He's thrown 110 pitches in this game and trails 3 zip. Junior Lake will follow, followed by Cole Gillespie. Well, sort of an interesting move, as you mentioned. The, the pitch count over 100, but Samarja may have talked himself into going out there for another inning. Swung on, missed. But that's what makes him the, the potential guy that you can build around with a staff. And Samarja is a gamer. There's no question about that. He's got great stuff. Still relatively young, though, when it comes to baseball experience. And an easy strikeout for Chris Capuano. His fourth strikeout of the game, and he's been on it. Oh, Chris Capuano is doing it again. It's Wrigley Field, and this is where he flourishes. He got the strikeout. And then what's really helped him today, the double plays. Three of them so far up to this point. And as you mentioned at the top, Chris, it's either on or off for Capuano. There doesn't seem to be any sort of middle ground. And today he has been all on. And since he came off the disabled list, he walked only three batters and never more than one per game. So he, he was on the DL back in June. Sideline to the calf strain for about three weeks. Junior Lake, who's one for two in the leadoff spot. Called up July 19th from Iowa, where he was hitting 295. Now, Dale Swain said we didn't get a great look at him early on because he had an injury, a rib injury. It was a high rib injury that he got from swinging. But once they, they got him up here, he's a raw talent that's doing a lot of good things. Well, and you mentioned he, he's one of those kids that has a ton of physical attributes and just needs to go out and play the game. Plays with a lot of energy. He's very good with all of the tools. And this, this is why, if you're a Cubs fan, this is why you should be excited. It's not going to happen in the next few years, but you're talking about 2000, maybe 15, 16, things start to happen. You'll have this young talent. It is in the minor leagues. They'll get to the big leagues. There's a ton of power arms. You got Castro, Rizzo, Lake. Just signed the number two draft pick, Chris Bryant. Great hitter. Plays a little third. And another strikeout for Chris Capuano. In the game summary brought to you by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. That's what Chris Capuano was thinking. Yeah, just absolutely dominant today. It's been all Capuano. It really has. It's just neutralized this Cubs offense. He's kept them off balance, stayed out of trouble. Carl Crawford, the big two RBI base hit. With two out. With two outs. And the Dodgers doing it again. Puig and Ramirez, they get all the accolades, and deservedly so, but it's a team effort. I'm going to say that about 10 more times today. <laughs> team effort. Uh, you, you know, it's not a cliche when the Dodgers are winning like they're winning. Jeff Samarja just saying his name is a mouthful. Well, I, you know, he, he's out there. He went out there to hit. And you just don't know how he talked to, talked his way into getting that at bat, whether it was, hey, I can get Capuano, I can hit him, I can see him. Because if that were the case and that was the argument, wasn't too convincing with those hacks up there at the plate. The 0-2 to Cole Gillespie. Toward right center field and drops for a base hit. And 
and Anthony Rizzo will come up with a runner at first and two out. Gillespie does a nice job outer part of the plate. Actually middle part of the plate. He keeps his hands in and shoots it to right. And then if we haven't said enough about Puig today, watch this. Just get it like throw it in on the run. <laughs> like you're a shortstop in the hole. He'll throw it anytime from anywhere. He's just he's fun to watch. Even the Dodger, you can like him or not like him, but he's fun to watch. Even the Dodger players are up watching his every move in the dugout. Here's Anthony Rizzo, who, who still has a baseball card in his locker of Alfonso Soriano, the Cub who was traded to the Yankees. In fact, the Cubs all got up and cheered when they heard that he, the Yankee pinstripes, uh, homered for New York. Talk about a developing player who learned a lot from Soriano. Right, he's one swing away right here for it. Making this a one run ball game. You know, that, that's the thing. Up to this point, you're thinking all Dodgers, all Dodgers, but Anthony Rizzo has 17 home runs this year. Left handers don't seem to phase him from a power standpoint. And the Cubs lead the National League in home runs at home with 72. Rizzo had two of them in the first game of this series on Thursday night. And that's towards Van Slyke that will end the inning. We have gone through six. The Dodgers shutout continues. The streak continues so far with a 3 nothing lead. Welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Budweiser. Andre Ethier leading things off for the Dodgers here in the seventh with a 3 0 advantage. Yeah. Trying to take their third straight in this four game series in Chicago. And Hector Rondon is the new pitcher. 25 year old Venezuelan. Ethier one for three had a single in the fourth. Rondon two and zero oh. came through the Cleveland organization, made his major league debut with the Cubs back in April, and pitched on Thursday night. A couple of innings, gave up a home run to Puig. He's got a pretty live arm. The minor leagues was. One to one ratio are pretty close when you're talking about innings pitch to strikeouts. The 
the 2-0 to Ethier. Got the strike. Samarja, the numbers, even though he batted for himself, six innings, seven hits, three runs earned. Walked five, hit a batter, struck out nine, 112 pitches total for Jeff Samarja. Inside. And it's three and one. And I think when you talk about Samarja, he battled today. Didn't have his best stuff, kept his ball club in the game. Didn't really give up a ton of hard hit balls. But awfully tough, though, to pitch when you know that your team offensively isn't going to score a lot. Because then it seems like every pitch is like do or die. The Cubs have had trouble scoring runs. They were able to sweep the Giants in a three game series. Base hit for Ethier. His second hit of the game. Time for our Just for Men mustache and beard. Play like a champ profile. And you talked about Junior Lake in the open. He has Cub fans buzzing. Already setting records, franchise marks for this team. Yeah, he's done well. He's sporting that number 21 that was made so famous here by a right fielder, Sammy Sosa. You know, he wanted number 22, but Matt Garza had that number and has since been traded. But I think he's probably going to stay You're with the gonna number. He's going to stay with 21 for a little while. <laughs> Things are going right. Jerry Hairston, one for two with a walk for the Dodgers. Leadoff man is on. They already have a 3 0 lead. Hairston played for the Cubs in 05 and 06. Born in Des Moines, his dad played for Triple A Iowa, who were then the White Sox farm team, not, not the Cubs affiliate like today. I made a comment earlier talking about the Cubs that every player should have an opportunity to to spend a, a summer with this organization. Cody Ransom at third gets the runner at second and at first he's safe. Hustling down the line with one out Harrison will remain there for Skip Schumacher. And one of the reasons I, I, I feel that every player should have an opportunity. I know growing up my dad used to talk to me about the Brooklyn Dodgers and, and how the guys used to live in the boroughs of Brooklyn and they were almost like neighborhood guys and then they'd go to work and they'd play at Ebbets Field. Well, here, I lived four blocks away from Wrigley Field and I literally walked to and from quote unquote work. And you know, it was a magical season in 2003. But walking back, you know, the guys and people, hey, come on in, let's buy you dinner. <laughs> hey, you were just embraced. You lived in the neighborhood. After a good game, I'd come home, there'd be an old-style beer can on my front door, cards from the kids. <laughs> and that's the way it used to be. That's the way it used to be. And that, that's why I say it, just a great place to spend the summer. Toward first, Rizzo gets Hairston at second. And Schumacher for the double play. Dodgers with a 3-0 lead. The Cubs come to bat in the bottom of the seventh.
by Fox Sports One, America's new sports network, coming August 17th. And by Just for Men Auto Stop, the foolproof way to get rid of grit. Capuano trying to keep the Dodgers streak alive, going for 13 straight. Military and fans on hand, on hand on a sunny day in Chicago. It'll be Castillo, Castro, and Sheerholz. 84th pitch of the game for the lefty. Driven toward left and will roll against the wall. Castillo with a double. Well, Capuano's got a three run lead, so he's just trying to throw the ball over the plate, work ahead of the hitters. Castillo gets a hold of this thing, drives it down into the corner. Karam's off the wall. Crawford does a nice job. Starlin Castro, who is one for two, had a single in the second. The Cubs, who you've mentioned, hit into three double plays. They're 0 for six with men on base, but they now have a runner in scoring uh -oh, position. Uh oh, uh oh. And you talk with Dale Swaim about hitting in this situation. Can you teach it? Is it about clutchability? Well, it, it's really when you're in this situation, it's about calming down. It's about trying to take the excitement and all the other variables of if I get a hit here, I drive in a run. You want to simplify it as best you can. You see a good pitch and try and hit it hard. It's clutchability a word. There's a floating ball toward right on the run is clean. And he's holding his left hand and well, wrist. It, it, because when he dove for that ball, it's almost like he lawn darted that left hand into the grass. Now he's signaling he's okay. But watch the way he doesn't slide. Watch. It just goes now. It goes right in. Let's go. Ooh. That's not a sliding along the grass where it just, it's smooth. That just, like I said, that's like a lawn dart. Ooh. Right into the grass. <laughs> He says he's okay. But he would say he is okay if he Right, no, you're, you're probably wall. right. You'd ask if the wall was hurt. But that just... It looks, it looks a lot worse than what he's saying it is right now. But it, as you mentioned, Chris, he's not the type of guy that is going to acknowledge any sort of pain or any discomfort. The guy wants to play every single day, wants to be out there. Sue Falson, the trainer, out talking with him, and Andre Ethier came over. I'm sorry, that's uh, Sue Falson's assistant helping with Puig. The good news for Puig, the, the out recorded runner stays at second base and working that, that left wrist. Nate Sheerholz which is low who has 14 home runs second on the team hoping to get Welling Castillo home and the Cubs on the board. Puig has run into some walls if already through the course of this season. Toward left field, Sherholz delivers. Castillo will stop at third. And for a game break, the MLB Network Studios. Let's go to Matt Fisker. Chris Philly took an early 3-0 lead. They got tied, then they came back against reliever Luis Ayala. Jimmy Rollins RBI double ties it back up at four for Rollins' career hit 2,132. That's just 103 hits away from passing Mike Schmidt for the most in franchise history. Chris, back to you and Eric. 
Thank you. And while Mattingly has a three and a half game lead, discussing things with his pitcher in the West, look with the Braves, and you've seen him quite a bit, Eric, are doing in the East. Yeah, running away with the thing, just like we're going to be going away pretty soon here with the Dodgers leading at three to nothing. Wrigley, he's out of this one with two runners on. And look at that string, especially at this ballpark. 32 consecutive scoreless innings. It's the longest by any visiting starter at any park since the day on Nomo. Nomo bobblehead day next Saturday at Dodger Stadium, by the way. Brandon League is on to pitch with runners at first and third and one out. Facing Cody Ransom, who is one for two and has reached on an error. And Brandon Lee starting the year as a closer, but he's struggled, replaced by Kenley Jansen. But in his last five outings, he's thrown seven innings, hasn't given up a run. Seems to have found a spot in the bullpen now. The 1 0 is low. 4 0 since 16 appearances mid June when he changed that role, that ERA under four in his second year with the Dodgers. And I. I think Don Mattingly handled that awkward situation rather well as Kenley Jansen took over the closer role and he's kind of reworked league into the relief area. Well, league has found a spot. It's, it's at middle sixth, seventh, eighth inning. Is one of the the options to fill that bridge or build that bridge to get the ball to Kenley Jansen. And now with the signing of, of Brian Wilson, he's working out. Expects to be in a Dodger uniform in a few weeks. You've got League, you've got Belisario, Rodriguez, possibly Wilson. As far as guys bridging that gap to Jansen. The 2 1 pitch from Brandon Lee. Toward third. The fourth double play the Cubs have hit into today. And the Dodgers and Brandon League protect a 3 0 lead going to the eighth.
pizza, which would be a franchise record that takes us all the way back to Brooklyn. And a 3 0 advantage is Matt Guerrier, the former Dodger involved in the Carlos Marmol trade, in to pitch and relief the third cup pitcher following Jeff Samarja and Hector Rondon. And Guerrier just wasn't able to get on any type of roll with the Dodgers. And since he's been with the Cubs, though, he's been very good. He's one of those guys that they talked about maybe traded at the deadline. You know, a playoff team seeking another arm. But still wearing the Cubs uni. Scott Van Slyke the start at first base today. And a high pop. On the plate. Van Slyke walks. Hit by a pitch. And one on one with Guerrero. Teammate moments ago for Guerrero. He hasn't pitched since Monday. And back in July 22nd is when the Dodgers dealt him. With the Dodgers, 120 outings. An ERA of four and a half. Since they had acquired him from Minnesota. A 10 year veteran from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Part of the Theo Epstein. Let's build, rebuild. They've been stockpiling a lot of young pitchers. Theo Epstein, I thought it was interesting. The Cubs president did so well with the Red Sox. Castillo takes it off his right arm there. Theo Epstein saying, I'm not a believer in one player, we're one player away kind of philosophy, which you hear a lot around a trade deadline. As the Cubs were active. Yeah, baseball, a sport that one player probably isn't going to impact the team. He may aid a team, may help out, may serve as a, as a compliment, but one guy isn't just going to, to carry a ball club. As you have been stressing with this Dodger it's team. The Dodger team, it really <laughs> is. Where it has gone so well. The 2 2 to Vance Light. Out number one. Fox Fantasy Football provides the complete fantasy football experience, fully customizable through your league. There's draft guides, so you can play a rankings and cheat sheets, state of the art features, mobile access. You always want it with you wherever you're going. 100% free. Log on to foxsports.com slash fantasy. Start your league today. I know a number of baseball players often ask me as a new NFL about certain guys in the National Football League when they hold their draft. It's like NFL players ask about their rotisserie baseball. So teams. who's your sleeper guy in the so. NFL draft this year? Well, last year I was Doug Martin, the Doug. Tampa Bay rookie running back. I got lucky there. Got to do some homework. We have our big Fox <laughs> football seminar, seminar yeah, starting coming tomorrow. Up. Yeah, that's right. We'll be thinking about you. <laughs> Here's Fedorovich. Doubled his last time, scored a run, and will be out number two. Juan Uribe is on deck to hit for the pitcher. Talk about Fox Sports 1. Get ready. America's new 24 hour sports network. Your home for live sports, news, highlights, shows, specials with the Fox brand. It's America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. Couple of weeks away, August 17th. Look for it. Your 24 hour sports alternative. Uribe hitting 262 with six home runs this year. Two out, nobody on. Did not get the start at third today and pitch hitting for Brandon Lee. High toward left field in the shadows, not deep enough to get to the track for the final out of the inning. Cubs in the bottom of the eighth, trailing 3 0. We'll see a new Dodger pitcher.
sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. And by Bud Light Lime Lime Arita and introducing new Strawberry Arita. The shadows here at Wrigley Field and some changes in the field for the Dodgers. Uh, Skip Schumacher will go into right field. You saw Puig saying he was okay with that wrist injury. It was Nancy Patterson Flynn who works with Sue Falzone on the Dodger training staff who went out and he said he was all right. But he'll be replaced in right. Juan Uribe takes over at third for Harrison. And at second base, Mark Ellis, who was thrown out of yesterday's game. Checking on balls and strikes, a quick hook, and then Mattingly got thrown out and nudged by the then home plate umpire, Alan Porter. Home plate umpire today, Greg Gibson. And pitching for the Dodgers, Ronald Belisario. But Belisario has done a nice job as of late. Been that bridge to, to Jansen. The, the concern, though, for the Dodgers, the amount of games. You know, Belisario is, is at the top of the league as far as appearances. Same with Kenley Jansen, Paco Rodriguez. One of the reasons why they signed Brian Wilson is to take some of the load off. Cubs within striking distance. They have hit into four double plays that have ruined any scoring opportunity. David DeJesus, who we talked live with earlier, uh, Dale Swain said was one of the more steady Cubs from start to finish or start to this point of the season. He's on deck to pinch hit. As a hitter right now, you've got the shadows. Belisario, a ton of movement on his pitches. Look at those shadows. You barely see the players. Barney has a base hit. Well, Barney said it's not that difficult. And the developing story of Yasiel Puig, who has had an adventurous day on the base pass, scoring the first run as he slid into third. And then a foul ball off his glove against the wall. He made the catch, but ruled obviously and correctly foul. And then more recently, as Eric Carroll pointed out, that wrist as he caught the ball for the out. He said he was all right, but the Dodgers kind of put Schumacher in right field and told Lee to take a breather. And you have stressed from the beginning the way he plays. You, you need him for the long haul. Right, you need him for the long haul. There's no question. You, you need him for the next 60, 70, 75 if they get the postseason. While you appreciate the effort, there is something about being smart. And reckless. And they have told us that Puig is a smart player. He's just an all or nothing guy. Hasn't yet been able to channel that and Clayton Kershaw told us earlier in the broadcast hey we take the good with the bad for all the good that he's done. Our guest announcer from earlier David DeJesus. We have to teach him that thing about not talking through a pitch right. That's <laughs> something that's, that's it's important. <laughs> people tell me that all the time. Cubs are hoping he could deliver on a pitch for Belisario. 33 years old from Rutgers in his 11th season. Hitting 268 with six homers. Toward left field. Crawford snags it. Well hit, but right at the well positioned Crawford. And that'll bring up the leadoff man, Junior Lake. Lake one for three is a couple of strikeouts. That was against Chris Capuano. Dodger pitching has been tremendous during their rise from the bottom of the division to the top. And whoever Don Mattingly trots out there in the field, on the mound, they have caught fire for the first place Dodgers in the National League West. Clayton Kershaw, the ERA leader. Tough one for him against the Yankees the other night. Really was. He threw a great game. Kuroda threw for the Yankees. He's unable to muster any offense. I, I think the thing with the Dodger ball club, what's made him also effective is their defined roles for everybody now. 
towards short. And they get one. And I say the defined roles, whether you're in the bullpen, whether you're an everyday player, whether you're sitting on the bench, there's Zach Granke right there. He'll get the start Monday. Then we'll see him next week if it goes according to plan on Fox Baseball on Saturday as they take on the, the Tampa Bay Rays, the other hot team in baseball. Adrian Gonzalez. You promote because you care. I do. The one time, the one time uh, Red Sox and Padre. Yeah, the Dodgers go up against the uh, as a four games against the Cubs here, and then four against St. Louis. Then strap it on right at home. No, uh, no off days. And Saturday also next week on Fox. It's at uh, get you a Hideo Nomo bobblehead for your collection, Chris. I, I will. He pitched that no hitter in Colorado. Yes, he did. The only one. And I another one in Camden Yards, which those two ballparks tough to pitch. Cole Gillespie one for three with two out and nobody on. Anthony Rizzo would be next should Gillespie reach. Capuano six and a third, six hits, one walk, struck out five, 88 pitches, and on his way to another successful win against the Cubs here at Wrigley. Base hit left field. Dodger fans, you can tune in to Prime Ticket tomorrow for the final games of the series. Coverage beginning at 10.30 Pacific time. Two on and two out for Rizzo. And Mattingly. Considering a change to go to Paco Rodriguez. Let's see if it's a done deal. The 22 year old lefty on his way in to protect the three nothing Dodger lead in the eighth. This game two on and two out. He's facing Paco Rodriguez. If you go back to Thursday night, Rizzo had a two homer game against the Dodgers. Ricky Nolasco, and then in the eighth, he homered off Paco Rodriguez. The only time that the two have faced each other. So an interesting choice here for Don Mattingly. It is. I, he's just going with the lefty on lefty matchup. Now, Rizzo, he has run into a few this year. Seven home runs against left handed pitching, although he is only hitting 204. Paco Rodriguez has been lights out against left handed hitters, so something's going to get. Opponents hitting only 145 against Rodriguez, and Rizzo 0 for 3. 
But it is amazing, and this is something that the Cubs, they're right in this game. One swing of the bat, you got a tie ball game. And it just seems as though the Dodgers have dominated all game long. But as I said, one swing away from a tie game. And too early for Kenley Jansen, the closer for the Dodgers. Kenley Jansen is your ninth inning guy. And this is why Paco Rodriguez is on this ball club, specifically to dominate left-handed hitters. The Cubs RBI leader is at the plate. A 2-0 count. Paco Rodriguez behind now 3-0. He made his major league debut in September. Second round pick out of the University of Florida last June. In a trouble spot here. And he walks Rizzo to load the bases with a cleanup hitter, Wellington Castillo. Honeycutt coming out to discuss things. There's a cup at every base. There are two out. Yeah, I'm a little surprised right now that Yonder Navarro isn't pinch hitting. You know, he's a guy that didn't get the start today as a catcher, but against left handed pitchers, he's hitting 462. He's got four home runs and 39 at bats. Seems like this would be the perfect spot to run him up there. Castillo is one for two today, has a walk and a double in the seventh inning. But you wonder how much the home run that Rodriguez gave up to Rizzo Thursday night figured in the way he pitched him carefully here. Well, you have to pitch him carefully. The only thing I'd say in this situation, the ball is not carrying at all like it did Thursday and even yesterday. You got the wind blowing in. You know, I. Would have liked to have seen him challenge Rizzo a bit more in that situation. But like I said, it, right now, Navarro for me would be the guy I'd have up at the plate. Navarro 0 for 2 in his career against Rodriguez. Castillo has never faced him. Bases are loaded. Now two and oh. Well, Rodriguez has got himself in a hole. He's trying to come in on both pitches. Now, even though it's two and oh, he doesn't have to throw this thing right down the middle of the plate because you don't want to have him drive something to the alley where possibly you can clear the bases. You've still got to make a pitcher's pitch. Don't give in just because it's 2-0. and oh. The 2-0 -oh pitch. And there is the strike. Starlin Castro would be next. He's one for three today. Emily Jansen getting loose for the Dodgers. The futility for the Cubs with runners in scoring position. But Rodriguez is helping him out. Now it's well, he, just, yeah, he just can't find the zone. And, well, maybe he wasn't trying to be careful with Rizzo. Maybe he just couldn't find the, the plate. Here he's 3 1. If you're Castillo, you've got to be sitting on it and ready to mash. I think that was off the back foot. Spun around like a top going into the ground. I, I, Drill bit. Weird. It, no, it was off the front. Right in the foot, left. That's the worst because as a hitter right now, you it's like your foot has its own heartbeat right now. It's just going thump, thump. Then you've got to get right back in the box. And if you're a pitcher, you want to come down and in again. 
Because as a hitter, the last thing you want is another ball off the foot. Bases loaded, two out, the 3 2 pitch. Runners will be on the move, obviously. And with the 3-2 break, he bought, you can do that when you've got a three-run lead. You know, you don't just have to throw that fastball right in there. And again, you have to guard against that ball going into the alley. Runners will be on the move. Something gets to that Ivy. Rizzo should be able to score. And Castillo has been a 315 hitter at home this year. He had a big home run off Tim Lincecum of the Giants last Sunday. It was the winning run. Helped the Cubs sweep the Giants. I still though I, I, I look at his numbers against left-handed pitching at 233, no home runs. I, I just like I said, I, I think I would have had Navarro up in this spot. Struck him out. The bullpen delivers for the Dodgers here in Chicago. The left field, David DeJesus, who pinch hit and chatted with us a little bit earlier, takes over in center. And the new pitcher, the fourth pitcher for the Cubs, Kevin Gregg, the closer, a two and three record ERA just over three with 25 saves, 22 of 26 in save situations. Here he's just trying to keep the Dodgers, the Red Hot Dodgers, in check so the Cubs can try and rally. Uh, and he started the spring training with the Dodgers. Didn't make the club. Found a home here in Chicago in his second stint. But a nice job. Another guy that they thought possibly would be traded. And right off the bat, Carl Crawford, his third hit of the game. And he's going a second after it was bobbled by Lake. And the runner in scoring position to lead off the inning now. Well, and what makes this possible is Carl Crawford running right out of the box. He's thinking possible double from the get go. He's sprinting down, rounds first base hard, and then when he sees the left fielder misplay the ball, he heads right on into second easily.
why you run hard out of the box. You never know, even at the big league level. And that's the position ultimately every day where the Cubs think that Junior Lake will play once he settles in his left field. Bouncer by Mark Ellis to first. Rizzo, they got the runner. Crawford caught up. And he is tagged out between second and third. And a chance to take a look at our Burger King plays of the game. Well, it's really been Chris Capuano and his ability to pitch, but more importantly, his ability to induce double plays when he needs them. Dodger defense playing well behind him. Schumacher to Ramirez to Van Slyke. But that's kept the Dodgers in the lead. Brandon Lee, him coming in, wanting to get in on the double play. Ties the season high for double plays turned by the Dodger defense at four. Hanley Ramirez with a base hit. After going 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. He puts runners now at first and second. Remember, Mark Ellis came in to play second base, so he moved up to second in the order. He's down at second. And Andre Ethier will come to the plate. Either with a couple of singles today. If you tuned in a little bit late, you see how Puig had an adventurous day with infield hits, sliding on the base, diving for foul balls, catching fair balls, and being taken out after it looked like he injured his wrist. I saw Adrian Gonzalez getting loose as the pitcher's spot is due up next. And the Dodgers. Starting the day, resting Adrian Gonzalez and Mark Ellis and Juan Uribe and AJ Ellis, and yet have a three-nothing lead, trying to get more in the ninth. If the Dodgers hang on here, they'll have a chance tomorrow with Stephen Fife on the mound to go for the the four-game sweep of the Cubs, who have been playing. Good baseball above 500 until they ran into the Dodgers. A winning month of July that had them for Chicago in over a year. No, and you're right. It's been a year. Previous winning month was last July. But not only did they win some ball games, but they also went out and acquired some young talent, building for the future. And they've got some momentum. And in Theo Epstein's words, it's not going to be linear. This progress is <laughs> not going to be linear. There are going to be ups and downs and ups and downs, but at least there is a plan. And reason to be excited with Rizzo and Castro and Junior Lake. Hope for the future, whether it's a, a year or two away, when those power arms come up from the minor leagues and the young guys settle in. The foundation in place for the Cubs. Theo Epstein. Two one to Ethier with runners at first and second. And only one out. You have to strike in there. Kevin Gregg was another with those four deals the Cubs made at the deadline. Gregg was on the block and sure. of course hadn't pitched as well. He was one of those guys we always ask players to be candid. He said, Hey, I, I don't mind being trained. I want to go to a winner. I'm yeah. in this to win. Making it look out down there. That trade early for Ricky Nolasco got ahead of the ahead of the curve, so to speak, and and he's done well picking up another win, pitching recently for them to solidify an already outstanding right, rotation. Right, and just trying to, to to balance out that rotation. Ned Coletti doing a nice job, as you mentioned, getting ahead of everybody. But at the end of the day, you want to play for a winner. I mean, there's no question about that. You can say, well, you're playing big league baseball. It's a lot of fun. I can tell you, I played on a team in 1992 that lost 99 ball games. And come July, while it was fun to play in the big leagues, it was not a lot of fun going there knowing that you were going to get beat. Just not a lot of fun. 
Adrian Gonzalez, the Dodgers leader in runs, hits, home runs, and RBIs, will be pinch hitting. Should he get the chance, he's on deck for the pitcher. The 3 2 to Andre Ethier. Bases are loaded. You pointed out earlier that as Chris Basio gets on the phone for some help in that bullpen of the Cubs that has been a problem this year. Looks like Michael Bolden getting loose. But Don Mattingly called Adrian Gonzalez his most valuable player this year. Well, it's it, high praise. It really is, especially when you're talking about some of the players and the types of years that they're having on this ball club. But he's been the most consistent, been there every day, drives and runs. Has a chance for more here with the bases loaded and one out. Driven in 66 runs. And the batting average at 301. But in the hole here. And just a hitter that's not afraid to use the whole field. Not the power guy that he once was when he hit 40 home runs for the Padres. More of a gap to gap type player now. The 0 2 and there's an out at second to get out of the inning. The Cubs trail 3 0 after rally here at Ridley. They're going to pull this out. Presented by Budweiser. Dodger pitching has been outstanding. The Cubs eight hits scattered. We've talked about the double play Chicago has hit into. And now with the shadows, the Cub hitters trying to make up a three-run difference against the 25-year-old closer from Curacao, Kenley Jansen. Well, the Dodgers who Thursday picked up another save. Well, Don Manley put him in the closer's role, and he has responded extremely well. The concern with, with, with Jansen is he has appeared in 54 games up to this point. He was the setup man earlier. Just wonder how the next two months will go. 
A converted catcher. With an ERA just over two this year. Facing Starlin Castro. 0 for 2 in his career against Kenley Jansen, who wears number 74 because that was that's the house number. His home in Curacao. Well, what's been impressive for me, 55 in each pitch, 77 strikeouts. Did you have that, Chris? Did you have that? Go ahead. Give me that. I, I the nine, and nine walks. I didn't have that. I mean, the, the, the control factor has been second to none. Seven straight save opportunities converted last month and we talked about how Brandon League you said was going to be the closer when the year began and how Don Mattingly had to handle things and even when you mentioned Brian Wilson and his possibilities of uh, helping this Dodger team Mattingly in the bullpen Jansen's our closer. Yeah I don't think there's any question about what Kenley Jansen has done how he's been able to perform. Again the, the thing for me that's been just mind boggling is the strikeout to walk ratio. And for a guy who hadn't been a pitcher all that long in his career. Signed with the Dodgers at age 16, his fourth year in the majors, and didn't pitch until 2009 in Class A, and then he was in the majors the next season. Well, the Dodgers did that with, with another kid uh, in the mid-90s. Felix Rodriguez was a catcher. They converted Tommy, converted him to a pitcher. He pitched for many years with the Giants organization. Set-up guy. Thursday night that looks familiar. He's got two outs to go to lock up another one. This is what the Cubs saw when he came in to protect the Dodger lead. Now, this is just a big man that throws the ball hard. Has some real bite, can hit the corners. Just came in and dominated on Thursday night. Nate Sheerholz and then Cody Ransom scheduled. And the most strikeouts in relief for Kenley Jansen. You talked about the Dodgers players fitting into their role, the high payroll, the slow start on a tear. If they win this game, they will have won 30 of their last 37 games and, of course, set the franchise mark for 13 straight road wins. Okay, and you can't plan for that. You can't say, well, we need to win 30 of our next 30, so we need to get <laughs> hot here. We, it, it just. It just doesn't seem achievable, but that's what this ball club is doing. And they're doing it in the most part without Matt Kemp. Now, granted, he played an 11 game stretch, but without arguably one of the best players in the game. Kemp, three different times on the disabled list this last time an ankle, and he said he'd never run like that again coming home when he kind of came in. He was wearing a boot the other day, but smiling. Said, I have no choice but to be upbeat toward first. Four out number two. Dodgers on their way to their 12th shutout. And among National League teams, that would be the second most behind the Pirates who have 14. And, and I'll say right there that we just had a shot at Don Mattingly. When you talk about the MVP of this ball club, it might be the manager because of what he went through. The, for up the, the beginning of the year that when they were struggling he kept this ball club together He kept the personalities the egos all that in check and he's righted the ship And there's one thing that he commands every single time he walks in a locker room And that's respect because you look at that resume. You can't ever question Don Matty He said it was rougher than I thought it would be the start to this season the way things were going with the record and and the injuries, but he said, I, I learned a lot about people through that stretch. And Dodgers, of course, hold an option on his contract for next year. No extension given yet. With great expectations for this Dodger team to not just make the postseason, but go far beyond. And you and I will be at Dodger Stadium next Saturday when the Rays and Dodgers play on Fox. Two of the best teams, hottest teams in baseball. Could be a prelude to a postseason clash. Talk about great pitching in July. What did the Rays? Oh, they were untouchable. Diamondbacks play tonight against the Red Sox. 
Dodgers will not lose any ground could widen their three and a half game lead in the National League West. Foul back. And with five pitching tomorrow for the Dodgers and they go for the four game sweep providing this holds up it. As you pointed out earlier it gives everybody a little more rest in that rotation in the. The hot days of August. So it'll be Granky in that. Start that series against the Cardinals Clayton Kershaw was nice enough to join us and we thank him and David De Jesus for being a part of the broadcast he'll get a little more rest he's been pitching into the late innings lately. As that is a swinging strike in the Dodgers 13 straight on the road something that this franchise has never done before for Eric Carroll up Chris Myers thanks for watching Major League Baseball on Fox let's go to Matt Vasquez and Eric Burns and to the MLB Network studios for post game coverage have a great weekend.